Good morning, good morning. I'm Dave, this is Lo-Fi Trader. If you're just now starting this video, we are live. We are live, so make sure you hit that live button. And if you're not live, well, you're listening to a recording, but that's A-OK -okay because today is the 8th, 2023. 3, 8, 2023. And all you gotta know is we're gonna run through the indices first and foremost. Right after that, we're gonna look at my trades and then we're gonna talk about what's coming up in the news today. So thank you for joining me. Good morning, good morning. B Stewie's already in here. Let me pour a cup of coffee. Let's go, baby. <clears throat> All right, guys. <clears throat> so we're gonna do things a little bit different today. I'm gonna to do my absolute best to stay focused on the indices. I'm gonna get all the way through the indices so that way I have a better understanding of what we can expect in the market. But we also need to know that um, Fed Chair Powell, he will be testifying. Good morning, 416 Trades. Uh, he will be testifying today at 10 o'clock. And you remember yesterday what happened right at 10 o'clock. Right here is yesterday's 10 o'clock. This big five minute bar, boom, so be careful. It's going to be volatile today. Uh, yeah, Amiri. What's going on, Amiri? That's you? Your 416 trades now? All right, cool. Good morning, good morning. I'm glad you're in here. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to run through the indices, and I'm going to try and stay focused. If you guys want to see something, throw it up in chat, and I will bring it up in just a hot second. But I want to make sure I understand what's going on in the indices first and foremost, so that way I have a better understanding, and that way I can answer questions thoroughly. So let me take a sip. Ooh, that's hot. I'm gonna have to turn that off. We got some upgrades coming too. My boy Terry Roberto came over yesterday and he said, hey, let's get that audio quality tip top, ship shape. So he will definitely be helping me out. I ordered a new mic. Uh, it's gonna be here in a couple days. So coming soon. All right, let me bring this down so we can see what is going on and let's just get into it, baby. I am so pumped for today. I am, I'm pumped. I'm glad we had a big pullback. And you know, a lot of traders, when they see these big pullbacks or they see their favorite stock die out, those are the guys that are like, bah, and then they step away for two or three days. But we are here every single day, Monday through Friday, eight until 12 guys, because we need to know always, always to be ready to pull that trigger on the big boys, right? So we're gonna run through the indices and let's get a better understanding of what's going on, okay? Good morning, Rabia, 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 let's do this. All right, so we're gonna run through the indices. Here we go. The IWM looking stronger than the overall markets themselves because it is well over the 200 day moving average and now is sitting down on that 186 line that we drew out a couple of weeks ago when we seen it break this trend line up. We drew this trend line out to watch and see how this is gonna react. Now we had this cup here and it tried to break away and it's came back and now it's retesting this breakout area. So this looks like a good area for IWM to try and defend, okay? So let's see if IWM can defend this area. So that is one, let's, I'm gonna write these down. So one is in a demand, okay? Uh, we'll do that. <clears throat> Netflix also looks like it's at its demand, okay? Why do I think it's at its demand? Well, because of this uptrend line and a curling 200 day moving average. If this breaks its demand here, it's, it's, um, it's supply, right? It's supply right here. Uh, I'm sorry, it's demand right here. Then it should head higher off of this trend line. So if the overall market wants to hold these levels around 308 and not break down too far from here, then I think Netflix has a chance in its demand here. Now, another thing too is, is if this does break, we probably could come test this 200 day moving average. So, I got two, two of the larger caps in a demand area. Now, Microsoft. So, Microsoft held a lot of its gains over the past few days. Well, I guess you can't really say that looking at the overall market, but we are above the 200 day moving average. That's what I wanna point out with Microsoft specifically that just the simple fact that Microsoft is holding above that 200 day moving average, uh, yeah, we will definitely get to TRKA in just a minute, guys. Uh, so Microsoft is looking really, really good here. I do really like that 200 day moving average to know like an even keel on whether, whether it is or whether it's not going to be healthy. And right now it's still looking like a healthy pullback. 
Um, I, I, I guess we could call this its demand area. It's still a little too high to be in its demand area personally. I think it needs to come down to 251. So I'm not gonna put that down for the demand. We'll just say it's open. Uh, then let's see what we got. We got Amazon, Amazidian, AMZN. It is sitting right here in its supply area or in its demand. Okay, so last time it came down in this area, it got bought up and it pushed through. And we can go back on the days and we can see that this has been um, volatile in this this 93 area. And we can see that when it's in this area, it, it chooses which way it wants to head, right? So this is gonna be its demand. We're gonna see if AmZidian wants to stay in that gray matter that I have pointed out right here for you, okay? All right, all right. We're gonna look in the hourly too. I just wanna make sure, yeah. So this is all kind of supply or all demand in this area. I would say this is probably its strongest area, this 92.50. So we're gonna say Amazon is in its demand. Next up, let's take a peeky gander at Meta. So Meta, look at Meta. Meta right here. I drew this line this morning, guys. Meta was looking gross. I had to really clean this chart up because uh, Meta was looking really, really gross. So what did I do? Oh, I just cleaned it up by taking everything off the charts. All I left was the supply above that we've used many, many times. And I just drew this line straight across because you can see it's tested one, two, three, four, five, six, and then came back up, broke through it, seven, eight, and it's on its ninth time retesting this area. So I think that this is in a demand area, but it's tested its demand so many times that I, I think that Meta looks weak here now. So it's really gonna have to ship shape up here, or I think we're gonna head at least back down to this 178 to test. All right, so uh, I, I don't think I'm gonna put this down as in its demand, but I think I should. So we got four, we got four and one that is not right now. Um, and NVDA, so I drew this line out. This is from previous week. Um, one, two, three, uh, it stuttered right below it, but then tested four, five. You can, what I'm trying to point out is this 230, the reason why I drew it is because it's tested this area so many times. Uh, good morning, little pencil. Let me get through the indices and we will definitely take a look at FRTX. Actually, I feel like I was just, look yeah, I, ha I have been looking at FRTX. So we'll, catch we'll catch up to that. But right now, I really need to have a better understanding of where this market's gonna go because I wanna make some money today, all right? Now, we got uh, Tesla. Now, I talked about Tesla the past couple days here and here that if this pulled back and it broke this area, that broke this 184, which right now is the bottom of its demand, um, if it breaks this area, I think we're gonna come down to this 175, 176. So Tesla's looking a lot like Meta in this situation where it's just kind of sitting there on the bottom of its base. So I'm gonna say yes, it's added demand, but two of those were pretty weak looking, okay? Just in my personal opinion, my buy or sell recommendations. All right, now we're looking at Apple. So Apple is sitting right on that 152 area. And you can see I have a few lines here on Apple. The main one I wanna just keep an eye on is this 152 area. And that's because we've had uh, price action on that 152 area multiple times, even from uh, you know uh, the 20, uh, 21, 2021. And then uh, you know we've seen it bounce off that price a few times. We've seen it you know, act as support and resistance. So for me, um, and it's kind of in the middle of its uh, its own um, its own sideways action right here. So this 152 is really, really important. That's why I decided to, to plot that line a long time ago, guys. And you can see even recently, it bounced all around here. It's, it's that same area like on Tesla's 200, you know? So uh, we will definitely see how Apple wants to ship shape up, but I'm gonna say it's in its demand area. So we got, we got seven in the demand area and one that is not, two of those uh, of which are looking pretty weak. Now Google is the same thing. You know, it broke through this supply and it traded sideways in it and now it's just kind of lingering like a fart uh, under the covers right here, you know? So if this breaks down here, we know we're coming down, back down to test this 90 area. Okay, these are my opinions, you know? Uh, I, I think, you know, I think, therefore I am, right? So we're in this one, we're in this 94 area. If this thing breaks down, well, where are we headed? 
where are we gonna head? Well, it's it's supply area, or it's, it's next demand, right? We're in the supply. If supply can hold out, then this will be demand. It broke into that supply, so is it going to turn into demand? Is this a demand area now, or is this its supply and it's gonna fall down? So, uh, you know, what, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take two of those, but we're gonna say that that three is actually not, we're not fully in its demand. Now, what about the SPY? We, we looked at the SPY and this is in its demand. So we're seeing some confluency across the board, guys. It looks like we're in a great area of support, but it looks like some of those supports are very weak, very frail. So my, my whole ideology behind this, my whole logic behind this is we need to be really careful, especially with the Fed talking today. We got non-farm roll payroll, I think coming out uh, and is it 20 minutes or did it come out at eight? Let's just take a look because I want to make sure that we have all that. I'm going to bring that up for you guys right now. But good morning, good morning. We'll be taking a look at the chat in just a second. So you guys hold out for me and I will be right there, baby. So ADP non-farm payroll, the actual was 106 and the forecast was 178. So the national employment report is measured by the monthly change in non-farm private employment based on the payroll data of approximately 400,000 US business clients. Okay, uh, a higher than expected reading should be taken as a bullish for the USD, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as a bearish for the USD. Okay, so the forecast was 178, the actual was 106, guys, 106. So that uh, it looks like the market actually took that news in a positive way. Uh, well, I'm actually looking at the, the latest release. So this release should be coming out very, very soon here, guys. Okay, I just wanna give you the idea of what the heck it was. And uh, let's see, we could take a look at last February. Uh, let's see, it was February 1st. And if we take a look at February 1st, we can see that with the uh, actual being lower than the forecasted, we did see a rise in the uh, payrolls. Now, not saying that we're gonna get the same news and we're going to take care of all that uh, and everything's gonna be A-OK -okay and hunky-dory because uh, if the if if they come out and it's higher, then we're, we're good to go. No, sometimes good news is bad news in the market. You got to be careful. So good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm trying to wake up, so let me take a little sip of coffee. Hopefully it's not as hot as it was on that last sip because I don't think I'm tasting anything now for the rest of the day. <laughs> Okay, that's better. All right, guys, so we will catch up on chat. Good morning, it is 8.12. B. Stewie says, good morning, traders. Good morning, good morning. Amire is here. I'm gonna keep calling you Amire. I hope that's A-OK. -okay. Amire, Amire. And Rabia, good morning, good morning. We're gonna look over T-R-A-K, T-R-K-A, right over here on the top left side. So, guys, we have been following T-R-A-K from its inception at around 40 cents. Then after it came up on this area, it broke through this area and came back to test it. So not only did it have a top, we also had a support here and then a resistance here. So we made this 50 cent hour support area. It's the only line that I had drew back in this time. After this thing bounced multiple times, there are a few in, you in chat that took that 50 cent area and used that as a risk. This thing took off like a bat out of heck and it moved right up into its supply area. After it played around in its supply area, found itself support around VWAP, this thing pushed higher in the pre-market and found its highs in pre-market around 96 cents. Right at open, we had a big push to clear all of that overhead resistance out, almost into $1, just under that dollar, 0.9876. And then from there, we had huge selling off. So we really need to be careful with these stocks, and that's why I preach it. The second we start looking at this, that this is a rip your face off stock. And this did hurt some people. And that's the thing, you know, that's the thing. When you get really excited and there's a lot of people, you need to know your risk. Well, that's why we dedicated our risk to this 50 cent area. And other people that got really excited in pre-market, well, I told them these highs right here, you need to be really careful around. That's why we marked this area. I said, you could use this as risk as it pushes through. But remember, a lot of these pushes up through can be big sell-offs like we've seen here. 
So guys, when you're playing these speculative stocks and we will be bringing up more speculative stocks today, we will definitely always be warning you about the risk of this. Now, FRTX, guys, if you look at FRTX, you can clearly see that FRTX broke through that simple area that I marked out on the five minute. We've seen this accumulation, and I like these accumulations. We had a gap down in the morning that held, and it held this whole area. Like it didn't, it didn't push down below these uh, these big liquidity areas. They held these liquidity areas, and then look in pre-market, it's pushing back up on volume. Okay, so what I like to see here, just like I showed you in the last chart, guys, is if we want to see this therapeutics, this very low float stock actually do something, well, then what we need to do is have a better understanding of what it is. So we're going to type in FRTX in our short squeeze quote, and I'm not getting any information on any short squeezes. No squazes will be happening on FRTX today that I am aware of. We are at a 3 million float. Okay, this thing is a low floater. Okay, it's uh, it's that doo doo floating in the floating in the water, guys. You got to be careful because this thing could easily get flushed, right? You know it's a doo doo stock if you're only sitting with three million. So we this is another FTRX. This is a be careful, rip your face off stock. Right now, this thing is up 83%. That's a big deal, guys. 83% is a big deal. But the question is, can it hold? Can it show us some support somewhere so we have a risk? that we can carry higher. So let's uh, carry on here. So FRTX is definitely on the watch list. I actually bought, brought it down here. Uh, we're gonna see where it punches in on our relative volatility for the day. So uh, let's get through the chat. Let's see, let's see. TRAK, please, in it heavy, didn't sell. Amire, Amire, I told you to take, you always take profits. Always take profits. Um, let's see. Uh, hello, thoughts on FR. Yep, we got you, little pencil. Good morning, little pencil. It's good to see you. Tim Schmidt, TRKA, still alive? Well, if we look at TRKA, guys, um, I would say after a big sell-off like this, like look on the daily chart, you know, a big sell-off like this, the only hope that we had was this 50 cents holding out. And we did see it pop, but those are usually the sell-offs because if you get a big sell-off like this with heavy volume, like look at this volume down here. See all this volume? We brought this up, like this big sell-off here. This is what some of us call a death candle because there's so much volume here. So then it met that 50 cents and a lot of people play these panics and it's a big bounce right here. And then once it gets up into its supply that I, I drew out for you yesterday, it sells off. So is there any more hope for TRKA? Well, I have to be very, very honest with my, with when I say I don't truly know because when we're down here in these areas, I can't, I, I can't see what's going on because I don't know where the volatility is. It's already ripped through and then you already have still so much overhead resistance. So if it were to come back up, if TRK were to come back up, we have a lot of fighting to do because it's coming from the bottom and we know there's a lot of overhead resistance with that, okay? So you guys throw it up in chat. Let me know what you want. Let me get through the chat and then um, Richard Pizzazz, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good to see you. Uh, regarding TRKA, do you think it might get above 55 cents again? Is the squeeze over? Thank you. Well, yeah, so we'll go, we'll, we'll talk about it just for a few more minutes, guys. Um, with this TRKA, well, do I think it's going to get above 50 cents? Well, here's the thing. I always act this, as you guys have seen, this 50 cents has been our support. It has been our risk management. We use this 50 cents from last week. We use this 50 cents as a risk. So if it broke through this 50 cents, we knew why? Because this is the most liquid, the most traded area before the run up, right? So that's why we're using that. So if we were going to use this as support, if it breaks our support, then we're going to use that as now resistance, guys. Okay? So keep that in mind. If you have support, it is support until it's broken, and then it's going to be acted upon as resistance. So no. Personally, I don't think it's going to get above 50 cents simply because if we do get up to 50 cents, we're going to have all of these bag holders in here, anybody that's still holding the bag, selling off into it. So will it get back over 50 cents? I'm going to say it would be very, very hard for it too, but it very well could. Okay. It very well could. Uh, I've seen some crazy things happen in the stocks and that's why you can't always be for sure. So look, it's all the way back down here and it's run up. 
You know, it could catch a bid. It could trade sideways, catch a bid, but I don't want anybody having false hope here because if we look at the volume too, look at this volume, we have a lot of volume that's selling volume, meaning anybody up here that was up here already sold. Any big player, they have sold because they don't want to be back in this and they're done with this trade, okay? So unless we see this ship shape up down here, form a nice risk, then we can take another trade. But I never suggest holding the bag because these small low float stocks can always head lower. So please be very, very careful, guys. We want to make sure we know our risk first. We're taking our profits as it goes up. All right. Ooh, Caesar's here. Caesar, good morning, good morning. Cheers to you, good sir. Mm. The news about dilution, is it true? Yeah, so guys, we're gonna, I'm gonna go over this with you. I don't think this is something that we're gonna go over a ton in this, but I'll just show you how I do it really quick. And this is with almost any low float stock. That's why I say if it's a low float, rip your face off stock, that simply means, guys, that you know it's gonna be diluted, okay? It's gonna be diluted. So let's go to BAMSEC. So this is where we can look up all of our company tickers to see if they have anything weird going on with them. So I type in TRKA on this, and look, right here, right here, 217.23, registration withdrawal request. Uh, let's see, um, initial registration of securities. They're trying to dilute their companies right here. Um, you know, we could we could go through this. I'm sure we if we if we went through Troika Media, uh, we could find some type of dilution on this company. Absolutely. Um, these low float stocks, that's what they do. Um, especially, you know, biopharmaceuticals, all those companies that are like that. They love to dilute their companies. They absolutely love to dilute their companies. Um, anytime there's a big pop, if you owned a company and you were just burning money, if you could just print money as well, you probably do it too to keep your company running. So I understand why they're doing it, but it's not good for any shareholders. And you know, they can get through it by by registering for these uh, for these uh, shares to dilute their company. And that's what they do, guys. They will dilute the heck out of their own company because you know why? It's just a name. They're gonna probably end up burning this company one day, you know, and saying, hey, you know, that's it. You know, let's start a new company. Let's take what we got. We'll file for bankruptcy and start a whole new company. And that's what a lot of these places do. So if you're here, we're going to cover a lot of these floats. But you guys need to understand these low floats are going to go up the ladder and then jump out the window. This is how a lot of them end up happening, especially the more hype. And that's why if we look at stocks like AI, a lot of people were so pumped to, to short this in this area because there is so much... Um, there's so much liquidity here. So it comes up and that's why we drew that line. It comes up, it smacks some of that liquidity and it sells off, but there's still liquidity here. So if this thing can trade sideways and build a new higher low, or at least use this 2550 as a risk, then this might be a great area to get in. But now's not the time. We need to make sure that this price action accepts this 2550 area so that way we can use it as risk. So same thing with Troika Media, same thing with any little penny stock that we have. A lot of times you guys are gonna hear me say, it needs more time. It needs more time, you know? And that's because a lot of them do. And when, when you get in, you need to get in quick, right? So. Uh, good morning, guys. I'm Dave. This is Lo-Fi Trader. Thank you so much for joining me. It looks like we have the whole crew in so far. We're still missing a few mamas, a few grandmas, but that's A-OK. -okay. They'll be here soon, but I'm happy to see the OGs are in the house. Good morning, guys. Good morning. I am happy to be here. Uh, we're just trying to wake up right now, trying to get them sips of coffee. We already ran through the indices, but we'll be going back through that again. I do want everybody to know that Papa Powell will be talking again today. Okay, he will be talking again today. We also have at 8.15, so the non-farm payroll data did come out and it came out higher than expected, meaning um, the unemployment change is higher than expected. Uh, I do believe. Let me uh, just read this out loud to you, okay? But remember guys, at 10 o'clock yesterday, 10 o'clock when Papa Powell came out, okay, when old Papa Pow Wow came out and he started talking, the second he turned down that gosh darn mic, look what happened. This thing sold off like crazy. Yes, it was. this is at right at 10 o'clock. I know I'm on the hourly, but this is right at 10 o'clock, right when he turned down that mic, it was the short button for the market. Everybody sold off. The second his mic came on, it, is this thing on? It just sold off like crazy. So let's take a look here. Yeah, so uh, March 8th, 2023, the non uh, not National Employment Report is measured of monthly change 
in non-farm private employment based on the payroll data approximately 400,000 US business clients. The release two days ahead of the government data is a good predictor of the government's non-farm payroll report. The change in this indi uh, indicator can be very volatile. So we see that we got a little volatility in the market when this came out, a little chirp to the north side, I believe, um, because the, uh, uh, the employment report is measuring of the monthly change in private employment. So I don't know if that means uh, 242 is ha definitely higher than the forecast. So it says here it can ex uh, expect a reading should be taken as positive for the USD. So if that's positive for the USD, then that should be a negative correlation to our SPY. So we were gonna see, cause these don't always uh, act accordingly, guys. You have to take the news for what it's worth. You have to accept and digest it for how you want to take it because sometimes good news is bad news. Sometimes bad news is good. And that's how the market is. It tries to price in a little bit of everything. Granny Ranny, good morning, good morning. It's good to see you. This one's for you. I cooked the kids chocolate chip pancakes consistently, I think, for two, maybe three days in a row now. But that's my goal. I'm going to give them chocolate chip pancakes every day before breakfast if I can. You wake up super early for you guys. I do to get my whole day started, get my family off right, and try to make sure I have enough wake up and enough sleep sleepy-eyed energy to bring you guys the best commentary, best analysis, and best live trading that I can possibly bring as a human being could. So if you like it, if you love it, if you want some more of it, hit that subscribe button, guys. We have upgrades coming soon. Don't you worry. My boy Terry Roberto came over. We have a new microphone coming in, and it is going to be amazing. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. We're going to take a sit so that way when 930 comes, we can rise up and we can take our trades in the most excellent possible way. And hopefully we don't have any bugs today. Yesterday we had a little bug, but we rode right on through that bug. So let's make sure we're caught up in Shrat, the chiggity Shrat. All right. Rabia says, I'm watching a risky one today, VRAX. Yeah, so I seen VRAX pop up on my scanners this morning. Uh, oh, actually, that was yesterday we were watching VRAX. So VRAX is very, very skeptical because it looks like it already came up in here. Um, Rabia, it looks like it already came up in this area and sold off hard. So I, it looks like you're looking for an emotional snapback off after this big sell-off. Be, be really careful with those. I don't know how to trade big emotional sell-offs like that. Um, I haven't... Uh, I haven't taken, I've, I've, I'm probably up on some emotional snapbacks, but I take such low share size on these because I just don't understand them fully, okay? So I've played it, like I've done it on snaps, like earnings, like earnings gap downs, where I think that, you, you know, they hit a resistance or a support and I grab that, that baby back up and I ride it back up and I get out quick, you know, I'm just scared. So if that's what you're looking at for on VRAX, I don't personally see a trade for myself, but you know, if it wants to come and test these areas, this $1 area, you know, that might be a nice little risk psychologically and because there's some, you know, there's some, uh, there's some areas of stoppage down here, you know? So just uh, be really, really careful because you know, just as well as I do, these things will rip your face off. They'll take your socks with it. Be very careful. Let's see, I wanna make sure that we caught everybody. Hmm. Is holding at 31 cents, TRKA is holding at 31 cents. Um, be very careful, TRKA just is not the play for me today. What is your thoughts on new stock for possible run up? Yeah, sure. So this is what I'm looking at guys. If uh, Weight Watchers, so I'm actually looking to short Weight Watchers, um, but if this thing can hold, so this needs more time. Personally, I, I'm gonna look for to short Weight Watchers, any kind of pop it wants to give me in market open, I'm gonna look to short to short Weight Watchers just because look at all this overhead liquidity here, guys. Now this is my opinions, these are my thoughts, they are not yours, so just hear me out, just know I'm a big talking chin and whatever I say or do can get you into some trouble if you don't know your risk, okay? So when I'm looking at Weight Watchers, look at this, a crazy amount of volatility for this Weight Watchers stock. And now I don't even know actually, um, what size uh, Weight Watchers is, I imagine by now. So it's a 53 million. So it moves a little bit slower, but it still can rip your face off. So be careful when you're sizing into this thing. But I'm actually looking because of the lack of liquidity in this thing and all of this shares traded up here. I'm expecting this thing to come up here a little bit. If we can get a little pop in the morning, I'd like to get in nice and heavy here, risking this high a day. So if I can get back up in here in the closer to that $7, 
area, uh, I would really like to take Weight Watchers as a short. We also have um, BLPH. So I was watching BLPH, look at this. It's holding these highs up here at this 450 area-ish. Now I'm expecting this thing to come back down a little bit on BLPH, um, but look, now I don't want it to come down much because guys, right here is where its support was before it just fell off the face of the earth. Um, so if we can actually see this thing, uh, actually, now that I'm looking at it, this doesn't have much volume traded up here. The volume that's traded is more down here. So what we're gonna actually have to see this thing for it to really ship shape up is it needs to hold all these gains and if it comes back down, it needs to hold this 330 area. So I'm watching BLPH because it is interesting. We are getting these pushes up, um, but when it comes to the areas for it to hold, this thing I think needs to come back down here and hold an area or really, really hold up in this area up here to really show some proof of concept. So that way we can actually have a nice little trade on BLPH. But in the time comes, I think this FRTX is gonna be a heck of a lot uh, more interesting. And that was brought up to me by Lil Pencil. Lil Pencil, are you still in here, baby? Let's go, because I like it. I like it, I like it. So I'm gonna be watching Weight Watchers for a short if we can pop up into this area. Um, if you guys remember yesterday, uh, I tried to get in short yesterday and I was trying to take this thing short at this top, but that's why we have risk management. After it pushed out, I got out a little here and then I got the rest out as it pushed on higher. So the Weight Watchers trade was a loss, but I fought back yesterday, made a lot of those gains back. Um, I think I ended this, like $12 down. So I'm on a revenge trade on this one. Yeah, you heard it right. I'm on a revenge trade on this one. That's A-OK -okay, though. When this thing pushes back up into this area, if it pushes back up into this area, I know that there's a lot of overhead liquidity that is stuck and I think there's gonna be a lot of selling off into it. So I'm gonna use this high of day as my risk and I'm gonna see what I can do to make some money on it. All right, so this FRTX, I really like where I marked this out. Like this is my alert. So that way when it broke up in this area, I could have gotten in. But obviously I don't play pre-market or aftermarket nearly as much. And the simple fact that you can't have a uh, alert. Your alerts in Thinkorswim actually will not go off for you um, in the pre-market. So we got an hour here, guys, in pre-market. So if you're here in pre-market, you're doing yourself a favor. I am very happy for you. Thank you so much for being here, guys. You know I appreciate it. So let's make sure we're caught up in chat here. Granny Randy says, good morning all. We got love shedding back her way. Rabia says we appreciate it. And hashtag dad of the year. I'm definitely not the dad of the year. There's always something for me to improve upon. You can just ask my wife. She'll let you know. There's plenty of avenues and streams that I need to work on. And that's what we're here for. And that's what I'm doing for every single day. I wanna watch you guys grow just as well, or just as much as I want you to watch me grow. Because this is a new channel, right? We're about a month into it. A month into it, we already have a crazy amount of subscribers. We already got amazing amount of viewers and we have so much stinking support, guys. I can't thank you enough. So, uh, you know, that's what we try to do. We try to learn every single day from our mistakes and we try to grow every single day. And how do we do that? We learn from our losers, we respect our stop losses, and we make sure we bleed positivity every single day. We don't let other people's problem become ours, and we don't let our problems become other people's. We accept our problems for what they are, and we keep on keeping on, guys, because that's what we need to do. That's exactly what we need to do. There's too much negativity in this market, so we need to bleed that positivity. Whether you're up, whether you're down, I'm always gonna root for you, and I hope you do the same for me. So, we're gonna go through my trades really quick. So. I got the uh, the SPY always up because I always like to look at the SPY before I start looking at my trades. And I always wanna make sure I'm looking at the SPY on this hourly. I am starting to zoom in a little bit too much yesterday looking at every single tick. Um, that's not good for you guys, but the SPY looking like it's sitting on its support area. Um, so we're gonna see if this thing wants to hold up. So I am in XM and XM is just still trading sideways on me guys. Um, we're starting to see a little bit of volatility come in um, right here uh, at the end of the day, but these are all anomalies. It looks like there are people getting in and getting out. Uh, uh, you know, like when you're trading 2.5 million volume and over here, you're only trading 107,000, but your dang, uh, but your dang bar is the exact same size. That's, that's a huge anomaly. So, you know, I'm keeping a really close eye on this guys. If this thing wants to get back down to where I bought it in at, I'm going to have to get out. 
uh, just because I, I just don't trust the stock so much anymore. When, when you see the volatility come in like this, you want to see it moving with the volatility. If it's not moving with the volatility, then the big institutional ownerships, they're doing something in this area. They're, they're buying a lot and selling a lot. They're changing their books up. That's my personal opinion. Okay, guys, the, I, I'm not an institutional owner. I don't actually make those trades. So I'm just kind of formulating my thought on how exactly what's trading, what's going on in these areas. Because if we're not getting a lot of volume or price action, but we're getting a lot of volume action, then what's going on in there? We're trying to figure it out. And so that's all I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to figure out what are these anomalies in the market on my XM trade. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it, but it is not in the safest trade. So I, I hold six shares of CLMT. We're trying to defend, or I'm trying to defend this 21 day moving average. And we're going to see what it does. It's just very small share size because trying to take these cup and handles, as you guys know, I have a hard time in the past and I want to make sure I do it the proper way. So CRUS, uh, you guys were here when I took this trade. It was squatting down that 21-day moving average. We are defending this 10-day moving average. So if it wants to break down this 10-day moving average, I'll take a small $5 loss. But if this thing wants to get gappy crapping up to the north side, well, guess what? I'm a-okay with that too. So we will keep an eye on those trades because you know I want to make some money, baby. So FRTX, we're going to see if that thing can hold. And I think as long as we're caught up on chat, oh, XPON. Yeah, we got to look at XPON, guys. Thank you, B. Stewie. XPON, guys. So we've talked about XPON. Remember, this is a 3.3 million float. It came up here with lots of liquidity, sold off, and then came back up today and sold off that liquidity. Hey, you know what, guys? We have to take a quick time out. I just remembered one thing. Granny Randy, I hope you are listening, and I don't care what this does. You got to listen, ladies and gentlemen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, sweet grandma. Happy birthday to you. Cheers to you, grandma. I am not even sure how many years old you are today, but I'm not going to put that up on stream regardless. Thank you so much, grandma, for being in my life, for being my guardian angel, and for always cooking me chocolate chip pancakes every morning before school. I love you. God loves you. And God bless you, grandma. So I have to give that shout out, grandma. Uh, you're a huge support. So thank you so much. All right, right back to it, guys. XPON, XPON. So we seen it make this huge liquidity push. It sold off. Another push, another sell off with new lower highs, though. And as it traded sideways, it pushed right back up into its liquidity. But this time, it broke right on through to the north side. Jim Dickey, good morning, good morning. Good to see you, brother. Thank you for stopping in. Uh, and then as it broke through, it came back to retest that liquidity area. After it retested, look at this thing, slingshotted to the north side. This thing did not look back after that. So with XPON, because it's very volatile, because it is a very low float at 3.3, we need to be careful with these guys. Be very, very careful with XPON. But what am I looking for for XPON? I wanna see this thing kind of trade sideways. I wanna see it squat down and like really build these higher lows. But this breakout to the north side right here, guys, it could be very volatile. This thing might catch some legs. Forget the eggs, it's going to the north side. El Smokey O Grande. I think I said it backwards, but hey, I'm glad I get to say it. Good morning, love to see that dedication. Morning, Dave, hope we get big money today. Me as well, El Grande Smokey O. Good morning. The play, well, we're going over a few plays today, um, but I'll tell you what I'm looking at here in just a minute. Um, what I want to do is go over through the indices. We'll go over it again and again, but guys, we need to make sure we have a complete understanding of what is going on with the economy. So just know that the non-farm payroll exchange came out. The ADP non-farm payroll came out and the actual was 942,000. The forecast was 200,000. Okay. And last time, uh, the last time I checked, it looked like the overall market was taking that as bing bullish news. Okay. So we're going to see how it over, it wants to react overall, but overall, since the news came out at 830, it looks like it's been holding up pretty well. Now, sometimes these things can have like a very dramatic change on the market and sometimes it doesn't. Okay. So keep that in mind guys, but we do have at 10 o'clock, I'll remind you again, at 10 o'clock, guys, we have Fed Powell, Fed Chair Powell. He's going to come out just like he did 
yesterday at 10 o'clock. And you guys remember what happened yesterday at 10 o'clock? Well, let me remind you. Let me just remind you of what happened at 10 o'clock. Right here is our 10 o'clock. Here's a five minute candlestick of 10 o'clock, guys. This thing just went straight down. Papa Powell turned on that microphone and it was shorts on, let's go. So be very careful at 10 o'clock because the last time we had a huge stinking sell off. So not saying that that's gonna happen again, but I'm just showing you what happened in our history. So you need to be careful. Granny Randy says 77, heck yeah. 77, I hope that I can make it to those years strong and keep on doing what I'm doing right now, guys, because I absolutely love it. And I hope I still have the passion, the energy, and the lips to keep on speaking it. So if you like it, if you loved it, if you want some more of it, hit that like, hit that subscribe, guys. I'm here every single day, Monday through Friday, eight until 12. And it's all free. I do this all for free. Live commentary, analysis, and live trading. Are you kidding me? How can you find that anywhere else? You can't. Don't even go. Don't even go look. I've already scoured for it. It's a lot of negativity out there, guys. Let's stay positive. We bleed positivity. Yes, sir. -y. So I want to go through the indices again. So that's what I'm going to do. But remember, Powell at 10 o'clock. IWM looks like it is bouncing off that support. So first thing this morning, we went through and I took like a tally. We had five on uh, demand, like on an area that have is supported, okay? And then there was three that was just meh. They weren't really on it. They were just kind of like cusping that bottom area, kind of like Microsoft. But we need to move out on the hourly and we need to start this over. So let's look at IWM. See this red line I drew? This needs to hold. So this is at its support, okay? But it's tried to support this area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is this gonna hold? Will this hold its seventh test on IWM? Let's take a look at Netflix now. So Netflix, if we take a look at this, it's uh, very odd looking at it there. Very interesting. So if we look at uh, if we look at Netflix right here, I was talking about it yesterday. If this breaks this three nine area, which looks like it's starting to break that three nine area, okay, it broke down and personally. If we don't see this thing ship shape up, I think this is coming down to this 300 area. You know, I really do because this is where its next support is. It's where its uptrend line is and that's where it's gonna want to hold. So we're gonna wanna see Netflix hold in that area. Now, Microsoft on the other hand is coming right back down into its demand, okay? Uh, it's falling, uh, it's actually trading at 253.91 right now. So it's not looking bad. But, uh, you know, it's definitely one that we're going to want to keep our eyes on. But I think it is finding a little bit of support in this area. We're going to see how Microsoft ship shapes up. Now, Amazon is in its supply area. So if it can, I'm sorry, it's demand area, it's resistance, right? Or it's support, I should say. So in this support area, it's going to try and get bought up and try and head higher. Will it? We will have to wait and find out. So we don't want to see this thing break down from this area and find these new lows at that 90. We want to see this 9350 area hold up and hold up strong so we can see the overall market hold those gains. So meta, meta, and I was talking about it, that 185 is very, very strong. If this breaks this area, I was looking at it in pre-market, if it breaks this area, I'm gonna be looking for shorts on Meta. So Meta, I think its next stop is gonna be this 180 area. And so if we get a pop in the pre-market, my main focus is gonna be Meta and Weight Watchers. So I'm gonna be looking for those pops to short. Uh, now I could be very, very wrong guys, but this area we know is strong. I talked about the 185 area so long, so sticking long, and I tried to get in short in this area, but because I didn't manage my stop losses very well, and I tried to play the backside on the front side, um, you know, we didn't we didn't make nearly as much money as we should have off this, okay? So if I wanna make some money now, now I know where my supply area is, and if I can get a pop risking something small, trying to gain something big, that's what we're gonna do this morning. Um, so NVIDIA, NVIDIA looks like it's coming down. It still, it still has some room to come down, I think, to this 230 area to find its support. So it's not sitting in its support. It isn't in its support area, you could say, but it's not sitting on top of that support. So Tesla, I'll be catching up on your chat in just a second, guys. We'll definitely be going over SIDU, Caesar, and El Grande Smokio. We did go over TRKA, but of course, we will go over it again because we know we always wanna follow up on our charts because if we follow all of these tickers, especially the low floats, 
not Tesla, but SIDU we'll be talking about soon. When we follow these low floats, you guys will finally start seeing in you know months of watching this, you'll finally start seeing that a lot of these low floats, what goes up must come down. These low floats usually don't stay up there and people are riding on a dream and I'm going to make sure that I'm here to commentate on that dream for a short time, but also warn you about the same issues that might pop up. So Tesla, guys, I talked about Tesla. I said if it breaks this area of 183, then I think we're gonna come see this 175, okay? We're gonna at least come down here and test this 180 psychological, but I think 175 is in the mix. And it looks like we are starting to break through. Will this continue down or will we sit on the support? Will we be able to defend this 185? We will only see, we will definitely be seeing today if this thing's gonna break or hold. So we will definitely see that, so. Hmm. 12 years old and fats here, baby. Yeah, baby, good to see you, good morning. Apple, okay, so Apple right here, guys. If we look at Apple at this 152, it is at its support area. This is a beautiful support area for Apple. We wanna see this hold this area, because if it breaks down, then I think we're gonna be coming all the way down to this 150 area, uh, I'm sorry, this 147.50 area, okay? So keep that in mind, guys. Uh, I mean, it might have some trouble on the way. Let's say, let's say 148-ish. Okay, 148.50 is probably where it's gonna head if it breaks that area. Now we're starting to see a little support in pre-market, some wiki wick offers and bottoms on that one hour. So we might we might actually see a nice little pop, which of course I would like to see because I'd like to see this area hold, especially Google coming back to test that same support area. So we have a lot of things coming back to test that support. And we have a lot of things that are gonna need to prove to us this morning that they wanna hold up. Because if they hold up, guys, if all of those areas hold up, then I think the market has the ability to hold these gains and try to head higher. Maybe not head higher today, but at least slow that bleeding, right? Because I told you, we bounced off these 200-day moving average. We're way, way, way above this 200-day moving average. We still have plenty of room to come down. We can come all the way down to 292, down all the way down to here and still be A-OK, -okay, all right? We don't wanna come down and break that 200. But as long as we, and I was telling you guys this last week, as long as we hang around, above this 200 day moving average, it's all positive for me, all right? So let's go over SIDU really quick. We'll bring up SIDU over here on this left-hand side. We will bring up the SPY on the right-hand side. And always make sure when you guys leave comments and stuff like that, a lot of times, uh, I know when I was on mobile and leaving comments, I would always have to re-hit the live button to make sure I was caught up. So SIDU looks like it's popping up off this 69 cent area, which is a nice little support. Uh, this uh, 71 cent area really was a nice support. But here's the thing, we're getting a pop up in pre-market and it's running right into this area. This is our liquidity area. Now we have a liquidity, uh, the highest liquidity area is in this 92 cents, but we have all this other traded volume right here at this 86 cents. So if you're looking at SIDU on the long, I got I got to say it's got a lot of fighting to do. It's already back down and sold off all that liquidity area and it's already trading back down to 79 cents. So SIDU got up to 88 cents today guys, but it's selling off quick and it doesn't look very good for SIDU. What I would want to see for SIDU to shape up for a bullish sentiment because you know I'm a bear with bull horns baby. This thing we want to see this push up through, come back and then retest that 86 cents. So it needs to push all the way up through this area, then come back and retest to show us this 86 area is support and not its resistance, okay? So that's what I got for that. I hope that brings you a little bit more insight. So let's see, it's 848. We will get real serious around 915. So we'll definitely keep up on chat all the way up till 915. But when 915 comes, guys, I'm gonna have to get my serious face on because I'm gonna be looking over the indices, my trades, and my two, I'm only gonna pick two trades that I'm gonna hyper focus on. So if you bring something to my attention in chat, uh, more power to you, we'll definitely go over it and I might make it my top watch list. So let's finish up on chat and let's see what else you guys got. Uh, okay, we can talk about TRKA. We'll just go over a quick refresher because we already went through all this. 50 cent was our support when this thing moved higher, broke up higher. I was talking about how as, the, as this being support, you want to take out your money as you are on the way up, guys. Always take out money on your way up so that way you are paying yourself. Pay, 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 okay? 
Then after this thing broke down, we had a nice little depth candle here. And as it broke that 50 cent area, that was our risk. So if anybody was still in this thing, you should be out long ago. Now, will this thing get back up into this area? It definitely could, but 50 cents is now its resistance. Meaning if this thing were to pop back up into that 50 cent area, I would use that as more of a short sale rather than an area to buy in. So I would not expect TRKA to come back. I believe all of the baggies are up in this area and that's why the company diluted its shareholders and sold right off into it. So let's see what else we got. Uh, 12 says, money comes and money goes. Learned an expensive lesson yesterday. Don't think it's time to quit yet, LOL. Well, 12 years, I'm glad you learned a lesson, but I really do hope you learned that lesson. I hope that you took that trade, you saved that data, you go back and you know where your entry is, where your risk was, where your risk wasn't in some uh, in some cases, and review that. Make sure that you guys really know what's going on because it can be a dangerous, dangerous place in the small caps, guys. And that's why it's always nice to look at the large caps as well because you can trade things like Tesla now you know they're a lot cheaper you can trade a lot other things uh, well I guess it's 185 but you could trade um, you know you could trade a little bit um, um, a little bit higher stocks or like instead of trading all those low floats and then buying and just holding forever buy for a short period of time just always know it's not gonna go to the moon with every single stock we can make money we just have to know when to take that money out guys so Remember your risk is always in mind. Okay, let's get back into it. Learn, brain isn't working now. Yeah, my brain isn't working right now, Year, uh, 12 years. Uh, maybe go have that quick smoke break. <laughs> go have yourself a cigarette, 12 years old. I'm only teasing, guys. I, I'm not advocating the cigarettes at all. It's uh, just a little inside joke from a couple days ago. But let's take a look at SM. SM, what is going on? Good morning, SM. It is good to see you in here as always. So NMTC, NMTC is trading sideways right now on the hourly. So what we wanna see on the daily, let's zoom out here. The first thing I see is a curling 200 day moving average. On top of a curling 200 day moving average, I'm also seeing support on a 200 day moving average, meaning this medical tech uh, stock keeps bouncing off this 200 day moving average. After it broke through and it broke back up through, it used it again as resistance. So this thing is above the 200 day moving average. It is trading sideways. And if it wants to start creating new higher lows like it is, higher low, higher low, if it can hold this $1.50 area, that might be a great risk, but know that this would be a swing for the longer term. This is a very speculative stock because I can already tell it is the medical field, okay? And anytime this thing is really given a hefty pop, it's sold off. So it is a very, very skeptical stock, but it looks like uh, if you do your due diligence on this stock, it does look like it is ship shaping up. So this might be something here. There might be something here. Now we need do need to be very careful with these though, um, because when we're just pulling a stock up and not taking a look at anything, we can take a look at this right now and show that it is a smaller float. It only has 3.5 million shares in this. So know that the same thing with TRKA can happen on this stock. It can just sell off quick. So make sure you know your stop and make sure whatever you're risking overnight is something that you uh, uh, are willing to to actually risk okay so guys check this out I want to show you right here if you scroll down you can make sure you're live by clicking this live button and if you continue to scroll down you can smash this like button right here our goal today guys is, is 25 likes if we can hit 25 likes today we are gonna be absolutely killing this stream so go ahead and hit that like button and if you like the content guys I'm here every single day Monday through Friday 8 until 12 I'm here doing live commentary analysis and trading I put it all in the line for you so hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of this big hairy chin just waving around and if you're from the the uh, Facebook group um, Robin Hood stock market watch list guys I'm over here on YouTube you can come on over here hit that subscribe button or you can stay right there in the comfort of Robin Hood stock watch watch list and watch me there guys I'm with uh, Carlos Mancino actually over there every Sunday from 12 until 2 Eastern Central Time. So, good morning, guys. If you're just joining me, good morning, good morning. I am happy to be here, and I am happy you are here with me. So, NMTC, yeah, this is something that you might want to watch. It's not really too crazy. It's not showing me too much. 
Um, you know, I'd want to see this thing, you know, it's in a downtrend line. You could consider this kind of a breakout, I guess, if you wanted to in this area. Um, but it's not really following any moving averages that I would want to see it squatting down on and following for a long time. So um, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a good eye, but I would be very careful because it's a very skeptical stop. So that's what I think about SS Sin. That's what I think about that. Let's see. Yeah, John Shields, happy birthday. Granny Randy, gotta love it. Nothing but love for Granny Randy in here. And that's what we want, guys, because she is what has bleed all this positivity onto me. If it wasn't for Granny Randy, I would definitely would not be this positive of a person so I uh, should have closed up before I went to bed yeah 12 you got to be careful guys when you leave money in the market overnight it's a scary scary place to be in a low float stock because that's where it gets manipulated that's where all the stocks get manipulated guys it really they really do because they can push they can if there's so many eyes on this they can get people to panic sell and panic buy they can they can pull the rug on you a lot easier in the after work. So yeah, I, I try not to leave uh, too much in a trade overnight. I usually just leave what I'm willing to completely lose if it is in a skeptical stock like that, okay? So um, let me, uh, you guys let me know what you wanna watch in the chat and I will definitely react, take a peeky gander at it. Um, I just wanna make sure that uh, I got all my all my ducks in one basket or all my goose in one hen, right? Is that how the sign goes? Let me take a sip of Shawana and we will jump right back into the indices, baby. So I'm gonna run through this because IWM does look like it is trying to hold that support on that area while Netflix does not. We're gonna see what Netflix wants to do here, but this might be a good short in Netflix if we can see a pop in the morning to short it in too. So I wanna make sure I have the idea of how I wanna play things in the morning and then if they don't work out exactly how i play them in the morning i need to back off now look at meta it is breaking down in that area it's probably not going to be the pop but now i'm going to use this 184.33 as my short area when this thing if if this thing can pop back up in the morning i would like to see it pop up right into that 184 06 184 even and that's where i want to take my Siggity short, okay? We wanna get siggity short on these Mickey Pickies, right? We need to make sure when we get that pop, we can sell off into it. Now, these are my trades, they are not yours. I'm just a big talking head on YouTube, and I like to do this. I love to do this, matter of fact. I wanna make this a full-time job. Is it not already? Yes, it is. After you bust your knee, you have nothing better to do, might as well give it all back to the community that has given it to you. So thank you so much for being here, guys. Meta is looking absolutely beautiful now breaking that 185 area when it breaks that 185 area what am i looking for i already said it guys i can't wait it might be a good day it might be a bad day but either way we are going to be here for you from start till finish monday through friday 8 until 12 baby so Matt tesla is sitting at 185.34 which now like i said if it breaks this area i think we can see this thing come down to 175 so things really when i'm looking at them right now they are, some are on support, but look like they can still head lower. Some look like they have broken their support and looking like they might get a pop and then a bigger sell-off. Amazon's like sitting in that support. Let's take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft finally started breaking down. It was holding up for a little while there, but now it's breaking down, heading towards its support at that 251.75 area. Um, and let's take a look at Netflix, because I still think Netflix has a little ways it can go. Um, and yeah, it, uh, 30868, so 30868. Seems like every time I look at this, it's different. It's moving on my charts, I'm telling you, I'm not going crazy, because the last time I looked at this, it looked like this was well down here to the 300, so <laughs> I have to <laughs> figure that one out. But yeah, it looks like this still has room to come down to that 300 psychological and the uptrend, okay guys? So be really careful, it does look like um, you know, we, we, we have the ability to do three things here and you guys know what they are up, down or sideways, but we want to be able to extrapolate some of that money. So if we can get a better understanding of which way this might go, then we might be able to make some money. So the spy, the spy, we need it to hold that $200 moving average. And if you look, it really does look like it's starting to curl here. 
I might be imagining things, but it looks like that 200 day moving average on that daily is trying to curl, but maybe not. Maybe it still needs a few more days to really figure it out. So we're gonna see some sideways action, I think, in the market today. And I think we need to bring up a poll to see what you guys think. Up, down, or sideways? I think it's as simple as that, right? Let's start a poll. We'll do, will the SPY, which is the S&P 500, move green, red, or sideways today? So we'll do green, red, and we'll add an option sideways. All right, there we go, guys. The poll is up. I want you to take a vote. Be honest on the poll, guys. Be honest. I mean, come on. Ah, be honest. I'm going to go ahead and vote, and I'm just going to be silly and say that I'm here for the stock picks, but obviously that's never a good thing. You never want to just be there for the stock picks. You want to be there to learn, so make sure you vote green, red, or just sideways, guys. What do you think the SPY is going to do today? Are we going to have a lot of movement? Or are we just going to end up sideways on the market? If that if that's what happens, I think that that's more of a bullish sign, honestly. If, if we could just trade sideways, I really think that that's more of a bullish sign in the market than anything. So let's see. Uh, let's see. I hate people that short, Timbo Slice says. Well, Timbo, you got to explain why you would uh, why you would think that because shorting is just, um, is just, is just, um, if you short a stock, you're just saying you're going to buy the stock later. That's all that is. So people that short stocks actually will, will get in short and then they actually buy up the stock later. So when I short something like, let's say Meta, say Meta pops back up there. I am basically saying, if Meta pops back up here, then I'm gonna buy Meta down here. That's what that's saying. So you don't have to hate me because we short, and I hate a hater hating because they never let it go, but I promise you this, Timbo, we can look at it in a different view. So just the same way in SPY, I did not want to take a breakdown in SPY. So instead, I took a break out in the SQs, right? I mean, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. So I'm not... I'm not shorting the market, I'm buying the mark up later. I'm just gonna borrow some shares to let these guys know, hey, I am gonna buy you up later. So, yeah, shorts are the future long. So Timbo Slice, I love the name, brother, because I watched Timbo, well, I watched Kimbo Slice, but I like Timbo Slice, that's cool too. But I watched Kimbo Slice for a very long time. I watched him all the way through his career, and it was really sad how it ended, but, you know, he was a very, very tough individual. I really like that man, so. Let's see here, Daniel, never been on this channel, stopped in, and this is the first thing I hear, up, down, or sideways, I'm gone. I can't flip a coin to decide. I, if you're only here for stock picks, you'll never be able to do your due diligence, guys. So know your risk, make sure you got good risk management, guys, but thank you for the comment that always helps. So we are trading now at 182 for Meta, guys. 182 for Meta. So let's run through the indices and see what we got. IWM just trading right there on the 187 area, bouncing off that base as Netflix breaks down as headed lower, which might end up down towards that 300 or that 299 area that we talked about. So Microsoft, check out Microsoft. As it breaks down here, it still has some room to come down to its support. Amazon, Amazidian, look at that, goodness gracious, some sideways action. Sideways action, you know you love to see it, because sideways action, what does that do? That builds up support. That way when we break through and push higher, we have a lot more people behind us heading higher. So we wanna see that sideways action to give us some proof of concept. And as Meta, breaking down still at that 182.99. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Will this give me a little pop so I can short? We will see soon enough. NVIDIA looks like it still has some room to come down to that 230 support. We shall see. It looks like we have a chat that says TENX. We could take a look at TENX. It looks like TENX is very well beaten down here. We're not seeing much of anything but a sell-off. Be very, very careful on that. In, if you want to see anything shape up in NETX, we want to see a big push to that north side before we carried on Wayward Sun. So TENX is not on the list, but thank you for bringing that up in chat. BLPH, 
ELPH is one that I'm gonna keep up on the right hand side here because it's still holding out pretty well. I wanna see how BLPH handles itself in these areas. So Tesla, Tesla, good old Uncle Tesla. I really think Tesla has the opportunity to fail and head down to this 176 area. If Tesla wants to head to that 176 area, then that might be a better buy opportunity, or maybe this is the buy opportunity here. Only time's gonna tell, guys, but in pre-market, we don't wanna get too excited. So, next up, Buttercup, we have the delicious and nutritious APL, A-A-P-L, yes sirree, it is sitting right on that 152 area. So, if Apple wants to find some support here and trade sideways, we might be able to find a nice long in Apple. But, if it wants to break down in this area, head on lower, then 146 might be the area it might head to. So, we're gonna keep on keeping on. John Shields says AMPH, AMPH. So yes, AMPH is actually a decent looking runner. Why do I say that? Well, we had a gap up on earnings and it's trying to hold some of these gains. So I think AMPH is gonna need a little bit more time here, guys. A little bit more time here because it's already broke down its pushed up area of 36. Now it's trading down around 35, but we need to see it ship shape up somewhere to give us a risk area, okay? But right now it's just giving back a lot of those gains. Let's take a look at NVOS. NVOS is breaking down, guys. And we brought up NVOS a few other times. We talked about how we had this liquidity area. Let me just pull this aside. Let me just pull this to the side here. So we see it pushes up and it sells off, sells off, sells off. It pushes back up in pre-market, sells off hard, and now is right back down here at its lows at 18 cents. So you guys are kind of seeing some confluency here, right? Every time it sells up in this area, it sells off. And then every time it comes down here, it's getting bought up. But how many times is it gonna push up here? How much, uh, you know, is it gonna keep eating away? If it keeps eating away, then what we wanna see is it eat away, push up higher, come back to retest, right? Just like on, um, what was the other ticker we're looking at? Um, XPON, I believe. It ate away that resistance, then it came back and it retested this area before it pushed on higher. So right now for NVOS, it's looking very, very bad uh, for the overall stock if you want it to head higher. Bearish wise, your trade was up here and you're taking profits down here. All right. So let's see what else we got. All right. Well, I think we're all caught up in chat right now, guys. Good. I'm glad everybody's happy. Glad everybody's happy. What did you use to do for work before trading, David? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I have been a lot of things. Carpenter, mechanic, uh, train, or teach jujitsu. I do a little bit of everything, guys. Uh, I'm all around. Um, but yeah, you know, right now this is all I'm focused on. I'm focused on my, focused on the viewership, focused on bringing the best live commentary that I possibly can bring, right? I wanna make sure that I'm honest with you guys, it's raw material, and that I'm getting the best feedback that I can to continue bringing the best. So that's my main focus, but I can go back and do any of those things. Lots, lots of different things, guys. Uh, I was Union Carpenter for about 13 years. I've uh, been a mechanic for I don't know, three or four years, uh, you know, I've, I've done everything. I've done a little bit of everything. Uh, Well-rounded, but um, mostly in the construction area, okay? So let me go through these trades here. So SMCI, so it's really, really tightening up on that 10-day moving average. I really like the way this looks. And we played this once in these highs, and I told you guys I don't like playing outside this 10-day moving average. And now look at this thing. It had a huge push up, a pullback, it traded sideways, and its range has been getting tighter and tighter every single day. And it's just under this $100 area. So, you know, if the market wants to take off today, I think this is a very strong stock to be in. And plus, it's sitting right on its previous highs, and it's one, two, three top. I really like this uh, area, and I really think that this thing could uh, really ship shape up. So, um, I think I might play a five minute range on SMCI this morning, um, or just take this, maybe I'll just put a bit out here. Give me one second, guys. I wanna make sure I have the proper risk reward on this. Um, We're gonna just go ahead and do this and join this bid. And we wanna make sure I'm joining in the after hours. Um, so we're gonna see if I can get this bid here. Uh, it'd be nice. 
if I could, um, spread is a little, uh, spreads off by like about 30 cents here. So we'll see if they want to give it to me. If they don't give it to me, that's A-OK. -okay. We will chalk it up as just another day. Be Stewie, my brother. Yeah, baby. Good morning, good morning. Uh, you're welcome, Twelves. You're absolutely welcome. Superman full. Super happy top guy here. Hey, Superman full. Good morning, good morning. I hope that you brought the info that we needed. Good morning, good sir. What are you watching? What are you watching? What are you playing? If you're new, just let me know. Maybe I'll give you a little insight of what we're watching. SMCI for the long run. Um, guys, this is this is a totally different type of trade than what we were watching with those small caps. And uh, we gotta be really careful with those small caps, guys, because they will rip your face off. TRKA seems that it did a lot of uh, a damage to some of these traders out there, but that's why we always wanna use our risk in mind, guys. Always use that risk in mind. We wanna make sure we stay risk in Verse. So if I look at First Solar, guys, this is why we play earnings gap up right here. This is an earnings gap up play, and that is such a beautiful chart. So now for First Solar, I have to wait for that to catch up. IBKR. IBKR looks like it's making that cup now with handle, trading just by that 10-day moving average. It only moves 2.2% at uh, on a daily range, but this is, looks like a very strong stock with the overall market pulling back a few days this has held its gains very well and same with amr it looked like we had a big pullback but that retest here got soaked right back up at 177 that looks like a nice little cup and handle but the handle didn't last very long um, but this is a huge coil on the daily and a, it's a nice little breakout um, so this this might pose um this might pose a nice little area uh to look at for a, a buy-in for maybe the future so we will see INSP. Let me take a little sip, Shawana. And we will go back through the chat in just a little bit and see what is going on. INSP, we're just keeping an eye on this thing. I'm not a huge believer in that. MNDY has taken my money a few times. We're down to probably 20 bucks total on MNDY, but that's A-OK. -okay. I tried it. Um, now I'm just going to sit back, relax, and let it do its thing. Uh, one thing we do need to look at is the earnings gap ups. Um... ACLS, yeah, this thing is looking really nice too. I like the way it's holding that. But the only thing I didn't like about ACLS is this huge sell-off. So I'm just kind of watching it because I don't like seeing that in the market. Big, wide craziness. Uh, remember, guys, pop a pow wow in 45 minutes is going to be popping on here. So be careful. Mind your business. Mind your P's and Q's. Because if you're in some crazy options trades, this thing can rip your socks right off. Get thrown them right in the furnace. Cooking, baby. Take your nose off with your mask. DHT, look at that. Goodness gracious. I should have just held on to DHT, but I just I just didn't want to. It was just trading sideways. Too slow of a mover, only 3.9%. That's why they bore me sometimes. EMBC, you guys remember, this is why we have stop losses. And you just trading sideways. We're not sure what's going to come of this. Just keeping an eye. Now, one thing we are, I see we're getting into AI. looks like it's sitting on support. We're gonna see if it wants to hold that area. If it does, we'll see this thing come here and test this more than once. So PBF, PBF is in that support area. We talked about these tops. These tops were their very tops, their all time highs. And I said, you know, right here, you know, if, if in this area, this thing is gonna sell off, you know, this thing's gonna sell off and then we're gonna wanna trade sideways in it. Um, before we can take off even higher, right? So we, we, we expect that to sell off here. We know we want to stay in this area before heading higher. So well, let's keep an eye on PBF. And well, F, uh, kind of wishing I didn't cut that, that short trade early. We made about 20 bucks on Ford yesterday when it was running into this $12.50 area support. Um, I decided to cut that trade. We made a nice uh, quick, I think it was like between $17 and $20 on Ford, but that was a good trade. I was very happy with it. Now Snap, at all time, uh, at all time um, monthly highs yesterday, if you guys remember, uh, Mikey G was in here and he was talking about those monthly highs and when he called it out, it was somewhere I believe in this area that he called those monthly highs out yesterday. And uh, you know, I didn't take the short because uh, I, I wanted to see what the overall market was going to do. And sure enough, we got it. And Snap is heading lower um, now. I am a believer in Snap. I think Snap for the overall long term um, is going to do well. But obviously, it just creeped over that 200-day moving average. It just hit monthly highs, and we want to see this thing hold some area so we know where our risk management is. So if Snap can hold these highs up here, if it can hold this area. 
Well, that's A-OK. -okay. Then we want to see it trading sideways, building new lower highs off of this area, building new lower highs. So show us a new lower high, maybe in this 11 area, maybe. And then we can find a nice risk reward so we can take this stuff higher. OK, guys? So let's see what else we got. NYT, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'm probably going to be cleaning some of these up real soon here. LPG, OSUR. Airbnb, yeah, it looks like Airbnb is really, uh, it looks like it's in its supply area. So it looks like right here is a lot of overhead and it looks like this is its supply area and, and it came up in that supply area just barely, just barely and it got sold off. So Airbnb is looking pretty weak right now. Uh, TTD, so this, oh man, the trade desk. I remember trading this. This was a really crazy trade, and then it came all the way back down. Um, and now it's trading sideways, which is good for it. Now, RBLX, I'm still looking at this thing, man. RBLX, what is this thing gonna do, you know? I thought for sure this was the, the most beautiful short you've ever seen in your entire life, and sure enough, uh, we did not get the most beautiful short in your entire life. I had to fight this dang stock over and over again, but hey, Say okay. HLBZ, HBC. All right, guys. Well, it's 9.15, so we're going to go through what we got in the stocks, what you guys have brought up. So HUBC, then what I need to do is really buckle down and really take a look at the market to figure out what we want to see. So H HUBC is right down here at its base, a new IPO. We want to see these IPOs creating these bases here. They can be extremely, extremely volatile. So HUBC doesn't give me very much information, but I do see that every time it comes down to this area, it looks like it's getting bought up. So this, the price action is telling me this $1.30 area seems pretty solid, but is that enough for me to use a risk? No, I'd rather see this thing test a few more times before starting to take off, and that is where I would use my risk. So right now, I don't have enough information on HUBC to really have a strong understanding of what's going on. So HLBZ, so I think I remember what this stock is. HLBZ, I remember seeing this a few times. Um, this is Hellbiz. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the stock does, but guys, keep in mind, every time we've seen this Hellbiz pop, it's sold off all the way, all the way back here since 2021. Anytime Hellbiz has had a pop, it has sold off without any looking back. So keep that in mind, guys. The little pop that we're getting here could be considered what's known as a dead cat bounce. If we ever want to see Hellbiz get back to where it was, and you need to understand this thing needs to break through, eat away this resistance at its base at 18 cents, form new higher lows, and then start to take off higher. But right now, Hellbiz is way too beat down. It's not one that you want to see. So I see TRKA is getting brought up quite a bit. That's great, TRKA. Uh, TRKA, yes, is bouncing off those bottoms, guys. We're, we're, you know, you can expect a little bounce. You can expect a little bounce, but don't expect too much out of this thing because this is where the trade happened. This is where the sell-off happened. And if this thing bounces back up, we could probably expect 50 cents as resistance. Now, it could be very, very wrong, but from what I can see right here, we're seeing a lot of resistance now at that 50 cent area. It's a psychological and it is a, what was a support is now resistance. So keep that in mind. If we do get a pop, don't get too excited. This 50 cent area looks like it's where it's gonna run into, where it's gonna run its head into, okay? All right, so RBLX, crazy enough, um, it's just looking strong, you know, with the overall market and its pullback. I couldn't believe this thing held so strong. And you cannot deny the price action. I can't deny it. Y'all can't deny it. So the price action is showing that Roblox is bullish. And I, you know, I'm biased. And I, I, have, a, I, I have a bias in Roblox. Like, not, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to lie, you know, if... Uh, if you have a bias, uh, it tends to persuade you. It tends to uh, skew your thoughts. So I got, I only got a few more minutes, so I really need to stay focused here. Guys, so let me stay focused. Let me figure out what is going on for the day. And then we're gonna hop right back into it, okay? So let me run through the indices really quick. Start with the IWM because it looks like the strongest it's at, at support. Well, Netflix, look, it's trying to break down. Microsoft looks like it's weak in this area. I need to zoom out, though. Weak in this area. It still needs some more time for support. It looks like Amazon is trying to give a beautiful push to the north side, but we're going to see if it wants to actually get up higher because every time we've seen a push up to that 94, we got sold off. Aside from this day, we sold off even higher. So 
we might look like a head and shoulders is popping up here guys so let's take a look at meta is breaking down so any kind of pop in here uh, 184.39 is going to have to be where we want to stay so NVIDIA 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 looks like we are wanting to use this as a support area. So is NVIDIA going to be strong in the overall market? That would be great because so far it has shown a true leader. Um, if this thing wants to take off here, we have a little bit of support here. We need to eat through this area right here up above it. So I would say somewhere right around there. Let me zoom back in. Let's take a look. VWAP, VWAP, so VWAP's down here. That's kind of more support, and it looks like it's acting it. So yeah, this is, it's it's right there, guys. Like, NVIDIA could go either way here. It's kind of just playing around in the middle. Um, so we will see. CLNN, let's see. Yeah, so it doesn't matter with ratings and stuff like that, and I'm not seeing anything pop off onto this and no real levels. Um, but we could we could definitely take a look at this uh, in the future time. But CLNN, whether it's rated at 13 or whatever it is, I don't believe in the news uh, till like after it's already happened. I believe in the, the price action, guys. So if I'm not seeing any price action, so if I'm looking at CLNN, I'm seeing a lot of overhead resistance, a huge amount of overhead resistance at two, and even uh, a lot here down at 156. So until it gets above that and then comes back to retest, I'm not really looking at it, okay? So NVIDIA is trading at 234.55, looking pretty dang good, if you ask me. Uh, as to where Meta is not at all, maybe it'll catch a bit, maybe it won't. But what I want to keep an eye on right now is Weight Watchers. So Weight Watchers, man, I tried to get in 10 shares here just in pre-market just to see if I could get a nice hold. But it looks like it wants to sell right back down to that original buy an area of 585 so if we can get some kind of pop back up into this area for myself I would love to take a short there I don't know if it's gonna get all the way back up there but man I would love to see it so spies at 398.68 is what new vision says 398.71 yeah so it looks like it might find some support in this area if it can find the support in this area you know this might be a nice little uh, risk reward situation but uh, depending on you know what you want to use as risk are you going to use the uh, pre-market low because a lot of times that's not a lot of liquidity there to hold this up so be careful in the morning guys we need to really really keep an eye on it so so it looks like Weight Watchers I mean this thing, you know, trying to get those 10 shares in, um, really what I should have did was stuck with my guns knowing that this was a type 4 play. So I took this type 4 play. It was a beautiful play, guys. And uh, I got to zoom in on the one minute. That's how you see these type 4s. So I seen uh, right up at the top here, I seen this higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. Okay. I seen this breaking down here and I seen lower high and a new lower high here. Okay which formed a little squeeze. So right when it broke out here, I got in my shares. And when I got in my shares, I took out half here and I took half here, okay? Because I expected this thing to break out actually higher and clear the liquidity. Well, it did that in aftermarket, okay? So I, I was all out, I seen this clear that liquidity and I was like, okay, time to get in short. So I got a few shares in short and I rode this thing down and I made some money on the short. but. I didn't want to hold this thing overnight because as you know, it's very, very skeptical overnight. Um, so I didn't, I didn't hold it overnight. When it came back up to this area, I got the rest of this out. This morning, I tried to get in a few shares short right here when I realized what I did. And sure enough, this thing has been failing ever since. So with lack of liquidity in this market, I'm looking at this on the one minute and you can see these little spaces right here. That's lack of liquidity or ill liquidity. When you see ill liquidity in the market, that just simply means, hey, we don't want to be trading this thing or better yet there is nobody trading this thing right if nobody's trading this thing and we have all of this volume sitting up here we know that that's where the bag holders are that's where we want to short right that's where we want to buy what people are selling off we want to borrow those shares and we want to give them back when they're lower so that's just my opinion that's just my thoughts that's just what i'm watching out for these aren't buy or sell recommendations guys because you can get hurt trading you really can you need to make sure you're playing your own hand and your own book and you know what you want to trade because if you don't know what you want to trade um then and you're just taking stock picks you are really going to end up hurting yourself guys so let's bring up some uh mikey stock picks here because we absolutely love when mikey's in here uh we just talked about his spot uh, his, his um he brought up the um the snap all-time highs and it was looking like a good short yesterday and you can see snap has failed ever since so frtx 
FRTX and SVRE looking to short. I want to rip above the pre-market highs on both. Really? Okay, so you want to see it gap up above those pre-market highs. You want to see exhausted volume being wasted. Once everybody buys in on that breakout higher, you want to actually be there shorting. So Mikey's looking to see this thing test and look at we already drew this out, guys. I already pointed out this area, this area of support, this area of support here. Now, this thing is going to probably give us a nice little push because it's on support. And we're already seeing volume in this area. Now, this is overhead volume now. This is, this is everybody that's in this trade this morning is now stuck. That's over here, okay? So if this pushes up, we're probably gonna see some resistance. Mikey wants to see that blow off top. He wants to see it push out through there and then get in short. Uh, I'm looking for the same thing, but I'm looking for on um, Weight Watchers over here. I wanna see it push up into this liquidity area. The closer to this top, the better I can get my risk, the better off I'm gonna be. So I will start adding into this thing as it comes up, okay? So I think my main area, um, yeah, that's gonna be my main area. Anywhere in the 66650 area. Um, so yeah, I like that one. Let's take a look at the other one. Uh, Alex, Alex just woke up. You know it's close to time. I'm bringing up, I'm, we're raising the desk up. Alex is here, we're raising the desk up. Guys, if you are from Robinhood Stock Market Watch List, thank you so much for joining us on that Facebook page. We are on YouTube. So if you wanna come over there and hit that subscribe button, I would appreciate it. We're going an awesome community, and now is the time where we get serious, where things get real, where I start lip syncing, talking fast, not in sync, and we ain't no Backstreet Boys in here. But ladies and gentlemen, let me take a sip of coffee, and I need to straighten up. We are down to the last four minutes, 30 seconds in the trading the trading pre-market, and we are gonna see what's gonna happen during market open. What is going to happen during market open? That is the real question here. So what I'm gonna try and do is run through the indices, but what I want to do personally is make sure I have my stocks that I wanna watch up. So I'll be watching Meta, and I will be watching Weight Watchers. What am I watching for those? Well, Meta being ill-liquid in the pre-market on the one minute, also Weight Watchers being ill-liquid in the pre-market. I'm looking for a pop. I'm looking for a pop, and then I would like to get short in somewhere. As long as the market doesn't want to be strong, I think these stocks have room to come down more. Okay, I'm a bear in a bull market right now. I want to see, and what I actually should say is I'm a bear with bull horns, guys. I'm a bear with bull horns. Meaning, what does that mean? That means I want to see stocks go up. I want to see all of your S&P 500, your IWMs, your Microsoft, your Amazons, your Metas. I want to see them go up, but if they're not going to go up, I put on those bear paws and I swipe down, baby, because I want to see your Roth IRAs, your 401ks doing good, but if they're not, I still want to make money in the downside. So we're going to see what happens with the two of these. Let me just bring up this buy on this side. Maybe I put a little, a little alert on this that says mark at or above. Yeah, add or above and create on that and same for this so that way I don't skip a beat when I'm running through these. So good morning if you're just joining me guys. I am Dave. I am Lo-Fi Trader. We look at everything from small cap, mid cap to large cap equities in this market. We take live trades, live analysis, and live commentary. If you like it, if you love it, if you want some more of it, hit that like, hit that subscribe because we have an ever growing community. We are growing very, very quickly, and I'm so pumped to be here. So thank you so much, and thank you for joining me for pre-market prep. You guys are doing yourself a favor for pre-market prep. Now I'm just getting the bell out because we just want to be ready, guys. We only have two minutes and 30 seconds till market open. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. It is going to be a beautiful day. Whether we're up or we're down, we are going to make sure we have fun while we are here, guys. And Netflix is trading sideways at 309. Microsoft breaking down at 252 in that pre-market. Everything is looking pretty ill liquid guys that is different for well i guess i shouldn't say that's different we're on the one minute so what the heck am i supposed to expect on the one minute goodness gracious quit zooming in so far dave and you will be a-okay so let's take a look at amazon it's still trading sideways ding 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 yes sir we got one minute 50 seconds are you guys ready i'm excited and i hope you are too guys i hope you are too so nvda it looks like we are seeing this breakdown and if we can get Back up into this, this might be a sell-off area for NVIDIA. It looks like it has sold off twice, creating new lower highs. This might be a nice pullback in NVIDIA, um, but we will see. Uh, that's not my trade, so I wanna make sure I keep an eye on what I'm supposed to keep an eye on. 
Netflix, um, Tesla, this might be the breakdown area. If it breaks this 184, guys, it could come down to that 177, just as we talked about yesterday. Now, with only one minute left, I'm going to be watching Meta and Weight Watchers on this right-hand side. These are my trades, not yours, so make sure you play your own hand, guys, because if you don't, you might get smacked. You don't want to get smacked. We got one minute left till morning open. We got a little bit of everything that we're looking at today, guys, but BLPH does look like it might be holding those highs. We want to make sure that this can hold that 459. If it can hold that 450 area, then we might see a nice trade for the future BLPH. Now, I want to make sure that I stay focused. So after the first five or 10 minutes, guys, in the market open, I'm going to be pretty busy. So please just bear with me. I want to be here for you as well as you here for me. So let me know in chat what you're looking at, and I will make sure I can get to it the absolute quickest that I possibly can, okay? So, SPY's at 398.45. It's going to be very interesting to see how this thing wants to play out today. I'm very, very interested. So, let me zoom out here and see what we want to do. So, Meta, we are getting that little push. And Weight Watchers, can we get that push as well? It looks like Weight Watchers is... We should see a push here in Weight Watchers because people should take interest right here where that ramp up was. So maybe we'll get it, maybe we won't. But here we go, market open, let's go, baby. Good morning, good morning. If you're just joining us, I am Dave. I'm with Lo-Fi Trader. We're here 8 to 12 every single day. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are looking for some things and some things we are looking for. So we'll see if we get those today, guys. So it looks like Meta is getting that nice push up that I have asked for. Thank you, thank you. Let's head a little higher, Meta, because I would like to see a tasty little trade today, guys. I really, really would. So remember, Papa Powell comes out at 10 o'clock. Be very, very careful with old Papa Powell coming out because if he comes out and he says some things that aren't very good for the market, then we're going to see a very, very quick sell-off. And if you get a quick sell-off in the market and you don't have your stops in place, you could get in trouble very, very quickly. So be careful out there, guys. Treat the market like your friend but keep it at a distance like it's an enemy, right? You want to stay close. You want to keep your finger on that pulse. You want to know everything about it, but you need to keep it distanced like it's your enemy because it can always come out and bite your butt, right? So it looks like meta, we're getting that small push, but that's not what I want. I want it to go back up right there to that 184 area. And a matter of fact, I want that 184 area so bad that I marked so bad, we're actually gonna put a short sale right at 184, so that way if it can get to that, I will take it without hesitation. All right, so we're gonna put one there. And it looks like it's just selling off. We're really close to that area that I wanted to get in at 184 even, um, but we'll see. When that thing goes off, then we'll have a better idea. Let's look at FRTX. So it looks like FRTX did not hold that support. It broke through it, but it's still the support area. So it has some time because it's right in $3. So what is it going to do here? Will it hold that $3? SBRE looks like it has broke down so far. We're gonna need to see a little bit more time with SVRE to see what that wants to do. Let's see, Netflix looked like it's just came out. It gave a push, but it's just trading sideways. Uh, looks like Microsoft came out uh, with a nice little push there. Amazon looks like it's broken. It's breaking down at market open. Meta looks like it's trying to take off and Nvidia pushed right up into that supply area. So Meta looks like it's selling off really hard and same as Tesla on that push first thing this morning. So it looks like, and same as Apple, push this morning and sell off as to where Google's doing the opposite. Google's actually using that area, that base as support. We're still getting a nice little push from Google. We don't know if that's going to sell off yet or not. So we wanna keep an eye on these indices, guys, because they will give us a little bit better idea of how the overall market is shaping up. So if you're in any one stock, you can try and follow that market and see what's going to happen, okay? So it looks like we are getting that SPY, that push up in SPY. You know, we might meet this liquidity area. Maybe it'll come up and retest 299, who knows? Or we might be very, very weak in the market, especially everybody knowing what happened yesterday at 10 o'clock. We might see another volatile push and people are a little leery about getting into these trades. So um, be very careful out there, guys. Be very skeptical, especially with the small cap stocks, guys. I know a lot of you guys like looking at those small cap stocks. You need to be skeptical. If you're looking at small cap stocks, it's safer to look on the short side. 
It really is. If you know your risk, let's put it that way. If you know your risk, it's almost safer to look at the short side because 90% of those stocks, they fail, guys. So you got to be careful. You got to be really careful with those shorts. And, you know, we might, um, you know, after looking at TRKA, now it brought in a lot of viewership and it brought in a lot of people, but I also seen a lot of hurt that TRKA caused in the community. Okay, so when I see that, it makes me want to... It makes me want to step a little bit further back from the small cap stocks because I think in that community, you could bring a lot of negativity with you if a lot of people are losing that money, okay? So that's something that we need to look at, EFRG right here. So Bullfrog, now look, we are getting that breakout on Bullfrog. Bullfrog is an AI holdings company that looks like it's just starting to get a little attention. I believe John Shields, I believe, brought this to our attention before. And, you know, I was telling him how we want to see something hold here. And we are seeing it hold. But is this a breakout? Is this a breakout on volume? Um, is this something that we want to take? Well, you know, uh, I've been taking these breakouts and I've been losing my ass on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a simple small five shares. When I say losing my ass on them, I actually just mean, guys, I, I've been taking small share size and I've been losing five or six bucks here and there. So not losing my butt on these really, but um, you know, I, I take those share size and that's a-okay because I want to back test these, these, okay? And if we're up in an uptrend, in an uptrend in a market, well, that might be something that might actually take off. But I'm just testing, I'm just back testing these. These I found a lot of times are a lot nicer to short in these areas. Um, so you just need to be really careful. And just so you know, guys, like I, I get in, I'm down 16 cents. So you need to be careful in these. It takes a little while. I only took five shares because I want these breakout trades to work. They're fun. They're flashy. Now look at this. Meta is just really breaking down here, guys. Really breaking down here. Um, I almost want to just take this momentum down to the south side. I'm not really good with that. I need to at least wait for a pop back in this 183 area. Um, goodness, you know, I was right to met on the short side, but I was wrong for the pop. Where's the pop? It doesn't want to give it to us. So we'll keep on looking at that. We'll keep on eyeballing that. We might actually get the pop in Weight Watchers, though. If we can get a nice little pop in Weight Watchers back up to these highs, yes sirree, I might still get my trade. I might get actually what I'm looking for. Smaller shares, better risk. Yes, sir, John, I do believe. Um, if are you Were you looking at that, John? Was I correct? You were looking at that BLPH, right? That Bullfrog AI. Uh, let me know. Let me know if that's what you're looking at, because uh, if you're looking at Bullfrog AI, you're going to want to watch AI itself, too, because right now AI is the leader in this sector. It just keeps testing this 2550 area. Uh, it doesn't look too strong right now because every time it pops, it's getting sold off into that VWAP area. So if this thing breaks down from here, it could head a lot lower. So be careful with that, guys. So uh, come on, WW, give me... Um, Give me something to play off here. I want to make some money today, guys. You know, I'm piddling, making little bits here and there, but I want to actually make some money. So I wish, you know, and I say I wish because I do wish. I do hope, you know, we got to have that. I do hope it gets up there so I can short, so I can take my trade. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Good, John. I'm glad I got that uh, out for you. Let's take a look at Tesla while we're waiting on a few trades. So good old Uncle Tesla. Yeah, just like we talked about in pre-market, guys, if it breaks this area, I think it could head a lot lower. And that's exactly what we talked about in the pre-market prep, is that if this broke this 184, 185 area, that I personally think that we're going to come all the way down and probably test this 176 area. Okay, so, um, you know, the trade was right there on that breaking point. So if you're not in, be careful because this thing can get swooped up at any given moment. Okay, so keep that in mind. I need to bring up the cues. The cues are looking like they're just lingering around on that area, and the spy looks like it's still in that area. So no real decision has been made yet uh, in the market, but we can see like some of the overall um, bigger stocks are starting to pull back a little, um, like like Meta, um, which I almost want to get this little pop, but I can't get nearly as much. It's not the whole game plan now. Um, you know, but it is looking weak. It did break this area. Is it back up into that area? It is back up into that area. Ah, maybe we just take a small share short, but you know, I haven't been being disciplined lately, so I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait and see what the market wants to give us. I want that pop, dang it. Give me that pop. I want that pop. BLPH, let's see how you're doing. Yeah, BLPH, it had that nice little, uh, no, it wasn't BLPH, I'm sorry. 
Uh, BL, BFRG. Yeah, what am I thinking, huh? We're already down a buck at BFRG. You know, it's already broken below that support. We're sitting at 420. You know, this thing is really gonna have to ship shape up in this area in order for it to be a continuation. So it needs to hold that area. If it goes down any lower than this area that I'm at, then I, I, don't, I don't care for it. I need to run through my trades and then I need to look at what we got. So XM came right down to my buy-in area and then that soaked back up. If you guys remember, I already have taken money out of this trade. We were already up money on this trade. So when it comes to this trade, if I have to break out for break even, I'm already up 10 or 15 bucks on that trade. CLMT, we're just hanging out with CLMT. If it breaks that 30-day moving average, then I'm going to be out of it. So we're not going to take a big loss on that, just a dollar or two. Uh, looks like we're up for the day on CRUS by a, about a cup of coffee. Good for us. ALGM, uh, did it get me in? Uh, I, th I thought it, no, I didn't. I was trying to buy more of that, but it didn't get me in. No big deal. Um, let's see, what else are we in here? Uh, JSPR, yeah, JSPR is just kind of chilling in that area. I don't like that breakdown. Not very, uh, not very tasty in my opinion. Now, can we get that Weight Watchers back up here? Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Let's get back up there, WW. SERA, SERA is just trading sideways, not looking the best. Um, with the overall market pulling back, we want to see these obviously try and hold up. So. Let's go back to the ones that I'm watching. Weight Watchers, I'm watching Weight Watchers. Yes, sir, -E I am. If this thing can give me a pop in the 6.6, I'd like to see it for a short. And Meta, I was hoping to get a pop this morning. I was really hoping to get that pop, but it doesn't look like we are getting much of anything at all. Today, it looks like it just wants to fail. Goodness gracious, man. I tell you, this might be... This might be... The breaking points. So we will see, guys. Goodness, what another break lower, man! And I'm, I am up. I'm having a little fear of missing out here, guys, because both of my trades are doing exactly what I wanted them to. I'm gonna go after bring this down here. Uh, they're doing exactly what I expected them to. We, we got a little pop and we got a big sell off, but that pop didn't go where I wanted to. So I am not in my trades as they are. So. Um, I'm going to just wait. Let's take a look at RBLX. I will get to chat in just a second, guys. Just bear with me. I want to make sure I'm doing everything that I possibly can in order to extrapolate money from this market. So we have this overhead at 41.50 on RBLX. I'm just keeping an eye on it. If we can get a pop into this area, it would be a better short than where I'm at right now. But this could be its resistance as well. So. Uh, let's just keep an eye. Maybe I just wait. I waited out guys and if I don't get what I'm asking for then we aren't gonna get it. TRKA is trading at 31 cents. JSPR still trading at those lows. It makes me we just want to get rid of these shares. I hate seeing those big but there could be a little liquidity clear out so we're gonna have to use this. We have to wait and see because we are still above that 10-day moving average so I can't be too upset can I? OB, OBSV looks like it's still trading sideways. It's trying to stay above that 17 cent area. And UNCY is trading at 141. Let's go through the indices really quick. So IWM did break down that area. It now is going to use that area as resistance. Netflix too uh, looked like it looks like it broke down, but it's touching that base from yesterday. So we're going to see if that can hold out. As where Microsoft is doing the same thing. It's just trading sideways right now, guys. And Amazon looks like it's breaking down from that area of support that I drew out for you. So if that thing does not get bought up right here in this 93 area, uh, Amazon might be heading lower. So be careful. Meta, Meta is still breaking down, guys. It's still breaking down. It's trying to get, looks like it's trying to get soaked up right there. Um, but every soak up, it looks like it just keeps getting sold off more and more. We're about 15 minutes into the trading session. Um, you know, I, I'm gonna take just a really small a short here. You know what? No, I'm not. I take that back because I can wait till VWAP bounce. I can, I, you know, much rather wait to get what I am asking for. I have, I need to be a disciplined trader and I'm just getting excited and I want to trade because I'm a trader and I'm trading on stream, right guys? So kudos to you. Thanks for bearing with me there on that. So why don't you give me what you're looking for? Let's go through this. So Alex said he entered some and exited 72, 20%. Nice job. Played it safe. 
Uh, golden sweeps coming in for spy puts. Okay, cool. Let's see. Hopefully, Paolo goes back to the playground to have fun. We need to stop lubing up that slide and sending us down on a million mile. Of <laughs> I hear you on that. Yeah, quit. He brings the Crisco and he just lathers up that slide. He goes, here, is this your, uh, is this your trade? Let me just go ahead and push you down. New vision, Dave, bring out the comforter and the baby bottle. Daddy Powell causing people to cry. <laughs> oh yeah, you're reading the chat, huh? Well, that's a good thing. Guys, we'll never, you know, since all the OGs are in here right now, all the originals from the beginning of the chat, guys, when we have negativity come across this, we're going to laugh it up. I'm going to give them a little positivity. I'll always twist it into a positive way, but then I'm going to forget about them and anything that they're saying. If they keep being negative, we'll get rid of them, and we're going to have monitors and everything in on that because, guys, we will be bleeding positivity from 8 until 12 every single day, Monday through Friday. I will be here to do it for you, and you let me know what you want in the chat, and the only thing Thing that will stick around is the positive. The positive will always l linger and the, the, the haters will die because we hate haters hating. But anyway, let me see what you have up here in chat. So let's see. Uh, spy put still looking great. Good job, Alex. Good job. Everything is looking like it is going to plan. Um, we knew everything was kind of sitting on that supply, but right at that base, and we're starting to see some breakdowns. But I do want to see what the overall QQQ and the SPY is doing, and then we can see, yeah, so QQQ is still trying to play off that base. Now, it doesn't know what it wants to do just yet, but it's riding right on it as to where the SPY is doing the same thing. It's kind of riding that area, just trading sideways right now, and it's not came up with a real direction. So we're going to see what the market wants to give us with these trades, guys. So, And as you can see, I'm kind of throwing some bids out there, taking them off, throwing them out. You know, I'm trying to get the feel for things. Um, you know, it just looks like the overall market does want to give us a pullback, but the real question is, is how far? How far is this going to give it to us, you know? Um, and, and you know, if we do get a pop, how high is the pop going to be? There's always, always risk in this market. So it looks like the trade to the south side was a grand old idea in this situation, and I may have just missed my mark. So we're going to see if this thing wants to give us a little pop back up in this area. It might be a nice area to short. We'll see. Give it time. Give it time. Let's see how BLPH is just trading sideways. Yeah, we want this thing to trade sideways because we want this next week for everybody to be like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We like this stock. We like it. So let's take a look at PLTR. Thank you, New Vision. We absolutely will be bleeding positivity. Some mornings I might not be so uppity up, but I will still be here to bring you the positivity in the market because there's too much negativity to not have positivity. So guys, just while you're here and I have your attention, take a look at this really quick. I My goal today is 25 likes, and holy crap, we're already up to 16 likes. So go ahead and smash that like button. And while you're there, if you're new, guys, uh, look at that poll. Look at that poll. Answer that poll for me. We want to see 25 votes on the poll as well. And not to mention, PLTR is soaking off on this top right now, guys. Hit that subscription while you're there. I'm here every single day, 8 until 12, guys. So those PLTR calls, uh, meaning that you're expecting this to go higher, I want you to know it's trading right in this sell-off area that it hasn't been able to get up over this 850 area. So I, I would imagine, you know, like um, puts would probably be... Um, Puts would probably be the best route. And I'm actually just gonna go ahead and take just a small, just a small 10 share here. I'm gonna join the ass to see if I can't get in PLTR on the short side. Um, just a really small 10 shares because I think this is a nice area to actually take that. Now I could be very wrong because if this wants to hold this area, if it does want to hold this 8, uh, 850 area, this actually could be a nice area to go long in. But I would need to see more time for it to shape up in this area for me to actually take it. So I took PLTR. We took that to the short side. We're going to see what happens here, guys. If it wants to break out higher than this, we're going to get an alert to let us know so that way we can see if those calls were a better idea than trying to short anything. So that's just my idea on that, Alex. Um, I could be wildly wrong, but up in this area on the daily, guys, it looks like there is some sell-off resistance and with the overall market wanting to go lower PLTR in tech might actually head lower too but it's just super small share size to see if what we can do I'm gonna try and load the boat more on one of these bigger tech stocks if they can give me the pop goodness give me the pop would you please so BFRG okay good morning good morning 
let's see what we got going on. First, let me get a sip of coffee, guys. I've earned it. I think I've earned it. Do you? I hope you think I've earned it too. It looks like it looks like Weight Watchers came all the way back down to this area. Man, the shorts. If I would have just held that short, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? Should I get out of TRKA before Powell pisses on everyone's chips? Potentially re-enter at lower average? Well, I'll tell you this, old Papa Pellwell might be doing that exactly at 10 o'clock. Um, but I have to say, if you are in TRKA, you need to keep in mind, TRKA, you need to keep in mind that the move was 50 cents. So if you're still playing this TRKA and you're not out at 50 cents or you're or uh, you didn't take profit up above 50 cents, then I don't know if you're playing this thing the right way. So I would just cut your losses, make sure, and these aren't buy or sell recommendations actually, guys. These are not buy or sell recommendations. This is just me. I'm just thinking, hey, you know, maybe, maybe not. This thing, if it does pop, it's only gonna go to 50 cents. At least that's what the data is telling me. That's what I'm seeing here. But I could be wrong. This thing could go to the moon still on you. Um, but personally, I, I don't like to hold anything. If it breaks my stop loss, my stop loss was at 50 cents, right? So I'm out. I, I'm, I'm out. I didn't actually play this, but that was my mental stop loss if I were to play this. And next time we see a small cap stock and, I, and I'm going through it and it gets really popular, you know, I might take a few chips in it so you guys know where I'm actually going to take these profits. You know, I was just telling you to take them. I didn't actually take them. So that way I can take them and show you guys and be the leader and be the example, you know. So right now we're up about a whole five cents on PLTR. We're going to see if this thing actually wants to sell off for us in its highs. So we will see. Let's take a look at Meta over here. Let's see if it's going to give us that pop. Are we getting that little pop in Meta? Well, we're getting a little pop. It's already selling off though, really, really quick. Goodness, you know, uh, you know, I'd love, I would love to be in the short, but we don't know. Maybe uh, Q's actually find support down here, and it looks like we're getting a little, a little bit of support down here, but it's not too much. We're looking at here on the five minute. It seems like we just have big sell off first thing in the morning and little support. So a lot more uh, selling volume has came into this area than anything. So we need to be really careful with that. We need to have an understanding of really what's to come on these things. So what is to come, guys? What is to come? Well, time is what is needed to see anything like this ship shape up so I'm gonna go ahead with these shorts this this small 20 share shorts and I'm gonna go ahead and define my risk on this if this comes back up and breaks these highs I want out I don't want to hold this anymore so I'm gonna just hold this shunt 20 share short okay 20 share short you try and say that five times fast Shelly Shelly's selling 20 shares short right <laughs> you give it a shot all right, so let's see what else we got. Uh, I was being too greedy. Yeah, 12. Hey, at least you're honest with yourself. And that's the great thing, guys. If you're here and you're not grumpy about losing the money, that's because you didn't oversize, you knew what your risk was, and you know that you're just gambling. And as long as you accept that, as long as you accept that, then you understand how these are supposed to work. And you can accept it. Don't have to, you need to have an, a malleable ego to survive in this. You definitely do. You need to be able to accept when you're wrong. You need to be able to hear other people's side of your story without harming your bias. And that's a hard one to learn because if I say, I love Snap, Snap's going to the moon, and somebody else is going, this is why Snap's going down, I'm gonna go, no it's not, and I'm immediately gonna wanna defend myself because that's my money and that has emotion attached to it. So keep in mind guys, if you're holding, uh, make sure you learn something big from this trade because I want my OGs to always be protected and always be smart about their trades, okay guys? So good morning, good morning, I'm Dave, this is Lo-Fi Trader. We are doing our dangdest to make some money in the market. And and we have actually striped a little, a little bit of cash this week. Uh, overall, we are down a very small amount, but we are gonna keep on scriggity scratching back. Maybe we can see some good news in the market and find some nice bases on these bottoms to head on higher. If not, we're gonna be the bear in this bowler looking market. And we are gonna shiggity short the heck out of it if the time comes. But we always wanna see the market going higher. We always wanna see the 401ks making money. And it looks like we're getting a small bounce on Netflix after a big sell-off. It's trading right down in that area that I said I would wanna see it defend. Cause if it doesn't defend, we might go all the way down to that 200 day moving average. So Netflix just bearing down on that uptrend. We're gonna see if it really wants to hold off. Sometimes these bigger boats take time to ship shape up in those areas. So let's give it a little bit of time and see. And while we are looking at that Microsoft 
coming right down back on that 200 day moving average. I don't like it under that 200 day moving average. So we're going to see what comes of that. Goodness gracious meta just now breaking that 200 day moving average. I do not like a breakdown of a 200 day moving average on a Microsoft stock. So let's take a look at Amazon. Also breaking down that area. Let's take a look at meta. Meta is giving us a nice juicy little pop in the market. Is this my opportunity? I think it is. So this is my trade, not yours. I'm going to go ahead and take a pretty little short in this meta because it's already came up to this VWAP and touched and is trying to sell off. Is this where the dumb money starts to short? We will see really soon here. I haven't taken it. I just want to... You know, I don't, I don't want to be too squeamish on this because I, I, you know, sometimes I have a hard time pulling the trigger, but I always want to make sure I am very comfortable with the trade. So instead of taking it immediately, we will look at the overall market. So I think NVIDIA is coming up into its resistance here. As to where Tesla looks like it failed, pop back up and is coming into, is this more resistance? It still has room to fail. Uh, let's look at, so we already knew Amazon. Let's take a look at Microsoft. So Microsoft here, we're getting a little pop in the queues. Is it going to break down in this area? Let's see the Microsoft, the Microsoft still breaking down and still has room to come down. So goodness gracious, it looks like the overall market is weak. Maybe I'll just distract myself one more time. Oh goodness. Maybe I distract myself one more time. Nope. Or I just try and get in the ask and do the dang thing. We're gonna have a really tight risk on this if it gets me in short. If it doesn't, A-okay, we'll let it go. So we are in 100 shares short in meta right now, guys, and I immediately am going to start paying myself into this by buying the market back up as it comes down. So I just sold 10 of my shares there, okay? We are gonna sell another 10 on the next push down if we get it. Just holding on to this thing and it is a pretty hefty short for me so if I get quiet or I don't seem all there well there's reasons for it guys because trading is extremely hard when you take big shares like this and you try to make some money sometimes it gets a little bumpy and just like that it is getting a little bumpy with a nice little push up and then a sell off into those wicks if we get too far into these wicks I'm gonna cut the trade very very quickly why because I don't want a huge loss and meta can do that if it starts wicking up on these bottoms and I'm just going to go ahead and cut the trade because I am not comfortable in this thing at all. So instead of cutting the trade guys, what I'm going to do is actually bring it down to a risk size that I'm willing to take. So what am I willing to take? Well, I think 10 shares would be a better risk reward risking the high of this BWAP, don't you? I do agree. So we were going to see how this thing wants to ship shape up. We want to make sure that we're <laughs> buying the market. And if you've done, if you haven't done this before, guys, uh, make sure you're doing this in paper trading because you don't want to get too big of a surprise, right? Uh, if you're doing this and say you just hit buy the market. Now, this is a liquid stock, so there's only uh, maybe a price difference of five, six, seven, eight, four cents. So we're looking at that four cents there. If if um, if that four cents, um, hang on one second, guys. If that four cents of range, say you buy a hundred shares and you just buy that market, well, that risk right there is going to end up being four cents on every hundred dollars, guys. Every hundred dollars, you got four cents on that risk, right? So right away, you're going to be down some money. You know, you'll be down some money and you don't want to be down money right when you buy in. That'll mess you up uh, psychologically. So uh, let's see, stream crash? No, we don't have a stream crash. I'm still up and running and things are looking A-OK. -okay. The stream health says it's excellent. So I might be on your end there, 12. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the chat and see what's going on since I'm out of this for a small loss. We're going to see how this wants to shape up. And I just, you know, instead of, let me just keep an eye on something really quick because we want to keep an eye on the cues and meat. I'm going to start calling meat meta. Let's see. Take a look at PLTR again. Sure, I'll take a look at PLTR. We are in PLTR. And I do want to get back in meta. Let's see if we can't get in here at that VWAP area and take it back down. So let's see. Uh, no, I'm at, you know, uh, that PLTR trade, we're still in it. I'm just holding out. We're going to see. And it stopped me out for $1.59. So PLTR looks like it might want to head higher, guys. Um, and if it does, that's A-OK. -okay. 
Um, you know, we want to make sure that we are managing our risk properly here on the show. You know, get a lead by example on this. So just make sure when you guys get in or out of a trade, like look at that, we're out of PLTR. It is breaking higher. It might look like Alex is right on those calls, but we will see because it has some more resistance above it to try and take out. Now it is above that 200 day moving average looking absolutely beautiful for the long term trade, but it needs some more time to ship shape up. It needs some more of that sideways action. So will it do that? Will it give a give us that in PLR, PLTR, excuse me, PLTR, as the Qs are trading at 260 or 296.71, and it is look like it wants to trade higher. So we're gonna see what Qs wants to give us because it's still just being that sideways trading action. And I think people are waiting for that extra two minutes to see what happens with old Papa Pell Well. So I mean, let me go through my trades and see what's going on. BFRG still holding up, that's looking a-okay. Well, SERA looks like it's still coming down. It's not doing much here in this area. I think I'm just gonna reduce my risk now on this because it has not taken off like I wanted it to. So I'll join the ask on this. Maybe it'll give it to me. Maybe it won't. Uh, we will see. Actually, the ask is way up there. Goodness gracious. So we're going to, what we'll do is we'll just set my stop so I can't lose any more money on this. And we will sell half of these right here in the daily. Thank you for letting me know on that. And we will make sure if we want to break down in this area, we at least get half out before we come back and check that we want to get the other half out down here. So our stop losses are set on that in case something crazy happens. Well, Weight Watchers is not going to give me that bounce. No, it doesn't want to give me that bounce. Well, good thing we got out of meta for a easy $67 loss right there. I should have waited. That's disciplinary rules right there being set in stone, being broken in front of you right here on the stream. And that is why, guys, that is why you want to stick to your rules. It's as simple as that. So now I get to try and fight back on this meta trade. It looks like I was dumb money today, buying at lows, selling at highs. What is going to happen here for meta? We will see. Time will tell. We just need a little bit more time. I would love to see it get back up to this 184. If we can get in this 184 or this 185 area, this might look like a good short. And sure enough, we have a beautiful little pullback right after I get out. So let's go ahead and look through the indices and see where we're at. So it looks like we are getting a pullback. We need to zoom out on the hourly. All right, hourly. And we're at 307.27 right now for Netflix. So it looks like that can still head a little lower, but it might ship shape up. Well, Amazon is breaking down lower, and so is Microsoft. Let's take a look at Meta now. So Meta, yeah, it looks like I was dumb money. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll see it. Trading is extremely hard trying to play those breakdowns. That's why you don't play those breakdowns, especially with old Papa Pell Well coming out right now at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, he turns the mic on, and look what happens. Let's look at the one minute to really see what's going on. Now, all right, 10 o'clock hits, boom, microphone drop. He turns that on and it is a huge short in the market. Is it going to continue to sell off? Well, if it's anything like yesterday and am I going to go ahead and buy in the low again? No, I will not. I'm gonna sit here and be a good little pup and see what the market wants to give us. So a big sell off like that might actually come in with more sell off and I'm gonna go ahead and do the dang thing. If we get a little pop and which it's not gonna let me in, it's not gonna get me in, of course it won't. But that's A-OK, -okay. this is trading guys. This is what's crazy fun, very volatile and a lot of fun on the stream. So if this is the first time you're joining us, no, I am Dave, this is Lo-Fi Trading. We do live commentary, live trading every single day, Monday through Friday, eight until 12. If that's something you can get behind, if if you want to be a part of an amazing growing community, go ahead and hit that like, hit that subscribe because we love to do it. Because if you ain't doing it and I'm not doing it, then it's never going to get done, guys. And you know, it needs to get done. It just, it does. It needs to get done. So where does SPY actually level off here? Because we had a huge short in the market and now we need to see what is actually going on. So if we zoom out here on the market and we see it broke down that supply level. So it looks like we're heading down to that up that uptrend that I have drawn, drawn out for you. And look at that, guys. It looks like we aren't gonna get in on this short at all. That's A-OK, -okay, no big deal. It's coming back up and we're gonna see if the supply wants to actually find some support here now. Because it looks like we have headed low enough so let's go ahead and uh, just short of Tesla, send you chart, Dave. Thank you, thank you. We'll take a look at that chart in just a minute. Let's see, I wanna take a look at Tesla to see where we are at on Tesla. Are we down here to its support yet? It is at 180, so I do believe, let me zoom out onto the hourly here, guys. We get a better idea of what's going on. 
So we are at its next area. Nope, it broke that area. Looks like we will come all the way down to that 175, most possibly to that 175 as the Q's still heads lower. So let's take a look at META and see if this thing is beating me up. So we're gonna zoom in right here on the five minute. We got these Wiki Wickofferson's on the bottom, but it's going right back up into that resistance. What is this thing going to do? It has been beating me up left and right. That's A-OK, -okay, guys. We are we will fight back. We will fight back. And if not, if I lose 100 bucks, well, I'm cutting myself up because that's the only way to do it. What up, Pedro? What up? How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. Alex bought 399 puts at 150 and sold at 197 when I noticed the volume I remembered. LOL. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Yeah, Papa Powell likes to turn on that quantitative easing button every time he turns on that microphone and he sells, sells, sells. So that's a okay. We're going to keep a look on the market to make sure that we don't get a nice reaction back to the other side. So what's going on? With WW, this looks really oh <laughs> no wonder why. Oh uh, yeah, when oh that no wonder why it looks weird. You're not looking at the right stock. <laughs> so it looks like Meta is finally giving us that push back, but I'm not seeing a lot of support in this area. So what is this gonna do here? Well, if we zoom out on the hourly, let's look at the hourly here. Not the daily, the hourly. If we look at the hourly, we look like we still have some room. Ah, nah, well, 180. You know, we do still have a little bit of room, but this might soak up in this area. It very well could in this area. Uh, we'll have to see uh, if that is how Meta wants to be. So let's see what else we got. Best day trade of the year on Tesla. Heck yeah, well, that's awesome to hear. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you took this breakdown um, maybe right here. Did you take this breakdown? Not 100 sure where you were seeing your play, Mikey. Unless you were still short from here, uh, from back in the day when we talked about it back there. So I'm glad to see you making money, brother. You're always extrapolating that cash, and we can always learn a little something from Mikey. But he did send me the chart, so let me see if I can pull that up for us really quick, guys. Let me see here. So we got the spy chart, we got the Tesla. Oh goodness gracious, yes. That is absolutely beautiful. Here, let me just pull this up in front of you guys, okay? So this is my boy Mikey's chart. Okay, Mikey likes to take things good and short. And as you can see, when we had a push up higher above those areas, he took it in short. And as he takes a big area in short, he sells off on the way down. On another pop, and he sells off on the way down. Absolutely beautiful, Mikey. That is why I love to get those messages from you because you always are bringing the heat in the shorts, brother. Good morning, Stu Clot. Always good to see you, brother. Thank you, thank you for showing up. Good morning, good morning. It is good to see we have the whole crew in here today making that money, baby. So we got WW right down here on its support of 344 with a huge overhead resistance. I'm looking for any kind of pop in WW to try and short. But for Meta, goodness gracious, is it going to try and hold this area or are we going to see it actually come down a little lower to that 174? Now, I know it has some support in this area. That's the only thing that's really making me skeptical on this because I know there's some more support, but I think it can come even lower. So we will see. It looks like we're trying to get a little push in the market, but I don't want to be that dumb money. We're going to go ahead and try and join the ask here for 100 shares short for a little go around for this meta trade. So we're going to hold on to this. We're going to see what it wants to give us. It pops back up here and I cannot, SoFi can be a player. We actually have been looking for SoFi for quite the time, guys. SoFi does look like a player in the market. Um, we can actually bring up SoFi over here on the right hand side. So SOFI. Let's take a little peeky gander at SoFi and see where it lays. So SoFi is sitting on its base. That does look pretty dang good. I do like SoFi here. It does look good. It looks like it's trying to hold that area. It looks like we have a support. And this is what I like to see. So New Vision, thank you for bringing SoFi up. So I do have SoFi on a longer term idea. So what I mean by that is like a longer term account. So I have I have a few uh, I have a few things up behind me here that uh, that. Um, sorry guys, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on my, <laughs> on my trade, uh, but I, I have a few ideas up here and SoFi is one of them along with a few others and we can go over that. Uh, definitely we can go over that, um, real soon here, but that's SoFi holding that, uh, that 
637 area, if it can hold the 637, which looks like it's trying to do now, if it can hold that area and then possibly um, head to the north side, breaking this lower high, this might be a good area to get in. And you can see I was already in this, in this area once, but when it broke down that area, I got out for a small win. So we played this on a earnings gap up. It's right down there at the base of its earnings gap up now. Okay, so this right here could be a nice little trade for the future. I would use this more as like a, uh, a long on an investing type of account, but obviously knowing my risk, this is where my risk is. It's not yours. It can be yours, but whatever your risk is, you need to know your risk. Okay, guys, so make sure you know your risk. So we are going to go ahead and keep a really close eye on this meta because if this meta takes off to the north side, we are going to be out lickety split as fast as we can. I'm going to go ahead and hold my uh, risk oh we don't want to get if it went up there and got me out there it would have actually added me in another hundred shares short so we don't want to do that guys we definitely don't want to be in another hundred shares short if it breaks to the north side right so let's keep a close eye on meta on this trade and see what happens so 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 five below support six two good if spending time around six four six two or buy above seven yes couldn't believe more uh, Joshi thank you so much for being here I do appreciate your time brother it's always good to see those familiar names popping up in the chat so if I'm missing anything uh, I have a set buy for some Tesla over BSS at one seventy seven oh you put it on Discord okay that's even better guys so if you look at the description in the chat I do have a Discord guys so if you want to see some of those uh, charts being played out for you. Uh, we just got out of that meta trade. No big deal, small loss, guys, but it's A-OK. -okay. We're going to see if it actually will play in our areas. We want to make sure we get in and out of our areas, and if we don't play our areas, then we're not playing our game. So was I playing my areas? Absolutely not. My area for the short is up here in this area. So we're going to have to give this some more time. Let's take a look at the few other trades. So we got out of PLTR, and look, of course, it broke its highs, and then it failed beautifully. So that's just part of the game guys we only risked a very small amount and we got out very quickly so let's keep on looking let's look at bfrg so it looks like our bfrg play is working out nicely we're up about a cup of creamer yeah a cup of creamer but we want to see this thing tear off to the north side why well because it is a very speculative stock and it needs to hold this area for me to hold my ideas on it okay so let me just make sure I am still working in this Facebook group, guys. I want to make sure that everybody can see me A-OK. -okay. We want to do our absolute best and make sure everybody's happy, okay? So there we go, there we go. Things are looking good. Now back to the market, guys. So Meta looks like it. this huge wick off the bottom is looking good. BFRG is looking good. Let's see how NVIDIA is ship shaping up. NVIDIA holding those bottoms. Look at that, guys. Absolutely beautiful. Now is this gonna be a new higher low? So if you look at NVIDIA, it's been creating these new higher lows on it. So will this come back up and create a new higher low on this NVIDIA trade? Only time is gonna tell. Let's take a look at Meta again and see if it's going to also do the same. So Meta's pushing up to this next area. 183 is its next area uh, of possible resistance with this big wick off top on above it. But I want to get a better idea of what's going on. Let's look at the SPY. And the SPY is getting a beautiful push off these bottoms. So is it going to hold out here or is this going to trade sideways? We do have a poll. Let's see what you guys are saying in this. So people are thinking the SPY will end green today. 41%. The other 27% says red and then 18% says sideways. So some of you, 18% says we're not going to go anywhere in the market. We're going to end up right where we started right here at this 390, uh, 3987. And let's look at the SPY just because that's that's what we usually look at, not the uh, S and, uh, the futures. So it looks like the SPYs came right up to the top of this and has a big wick off of the top. Looks like big resistance there. Uh, before we go in deep on anything, I want to just keep an eye on my plays really quick, guys. Let me take a sip of coffee. Wow. <clears throat> alrighty, alrighty. So let's see how IWM is holding up. It is holding up. It actually broke back up above that uh, support. So it might still be acting as support. People are buying up here, it looks like. But how many buyers are there? Are we going to exhaust those buyers today? Uh, time's going to 
you know, how bad of resistance is there for TR? So if you're talking about, uh, Amiri, if you're still talking about that 50 cent level, uh, you know, it's very, you know, it's, it's, it's heavy there, but I can't give you any buy or sell recommendations. Um, I, I've given you the best I can on this play. When it comes to that 50 cent area, it was support, but now it's resistance. So if it pops back up there, it's probably going to sell off. Um, that's just my opinions. Those are my ideas. So we'll see if that's actually what wants to happen. So Netflix is actually coming right back up into this area. It's giving it a nice little push. Microsoft is also giving it a nice little push, but these all look like pushes into resistance. So I'm thinking the same thing is with Vermetal. So how high is this gonna push? So guys, I do want to keep focused on this because third time's a charm, right? Third time's a charm on this play. And if we start to see the spy breaking down and everything else starting to break down, then I might actually want to get in short. So this will be my last sizable trade on this and then it will be to the gutters for me if I don't get in and it'll also be to the gutters for me if I have to get out so I'm expecting this area right here to not go any higher on this trade this is my trade not yours make sure you do your due diligence know that you risking money is gambling uh, if you don't know your risk reward guys so if you don't know your risk reward and you think that you're gambling you probably are okay so keep that in mind it can be scary out here, guys. It can be very, very scary. You can lose a lot of money really, really quick. As you see here, guys, I'm down about $124 on the day today. That is not that is an unusual loss for me. I don't like to see anything more than 20, but I do see these bigger moves in the market, so I am trying to play them. So if I take a loss, it's my money. It is my loss. It's my Rari that I'm risking, right, guys? So make sure you know your risk. Make sure you try and earn that Rari. Joshi says, better to use Anchor VWAP instead of VWAP. It works best. And I do like Anchor VWAP. I actually have a nice little Anchor VWAP um, uh, thing on my trader view that we could go back and take a little peaky gander on. Let me just set my stop loss on this, guys. This is on the five minute. Let me see what the hourly is looking like, guys. Let me see what this hourly is looking like. So I think uh, I think this hourly, I think uh, it did already run into its support. So we're seeing some some big wicks off on this bottom on this hourly, but on the overall spy, we're seeing a big wick off on the top. So this might actually be that sideways battle that we're talking about. So maybe we just need to see a little bit more time in the overall indices and, uh, you know, and see how these ships shape up because these double hourly bottoms, these double hourly wicks on the bottom, they do make me a little nervous, guys. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, SMCI mark is above. I need a little bit of distraction apparently smci so smci is taking off goodness gracious did i not did i get those trade I, I did get the shares bam baby let's freaking go all right this is what i'm gonna do guys we are gonna get out of this trade we are going to go ahead and join that we're gonna sell by market on this we just ended a nice $35 trade on Microsoft. Now, I need to do that because I don't want my attention to be focused somewhere else. Look at this beautiful trade, SMCI. Guys, if this, if you guys were here this morning, I looked at SMCI and I said, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. This is a trade I wanna be in because why? It squatted down on this 10 day moving average. If you guys remember, I was actually in this trade right back here. I was in this stinking trade and what happened? I need to get half of this, half of these shares out though right now. So we have, we have 25, we're gonna take out 15 shares right here. Okay, and we're gonna sell the market and why? Well, because I wanna make sure I'm paying myself. We're right into this resistance now. We pushed up right into this resistance. Now, we're up about 100 bucks on this beautiful SMCI play. This is a long-term play, guys. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is it's ship shaping up better with the overall market, okay? It is ship shaped up well, way better than the overall market. And so that's why I like this play. So what did I do? I took half of the shares out when I got this first push. Why? Because it's right into that resistance. So this thing might come all the way back down on me like I've seen happen many, many times in a weak market. Well, is the market weak or is it gonna push higher? Only time is gonna tell with that. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make sure I lock in my money. If it wants to come back down here and test, we might add more into it. But because it was squatting down on a super tight range above that 10 day moving average, we took SMCI this morning and it is paying us very, very well. So look at that, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you like to see. That's how you make money in this market. And it is starting to go higher. If this thing wants to push up even higher, goodness gracious, you might see me make a lot 
more money on this trade. So power to me, baby, because we took a couple smacks across the face this morning, and then sure enough, we are fighting back with a vengeance. Let's take a look at this meta trade on the five minute. Goodness gracious, it looks like if I would have just, well, no, let's take a look at the hour because that's what I was on. So we're just trading sideways here on meta. I am expecting a bigger pullback in this. I could not hold out on those last little bits. So we're down about 93 bucks over here on meta and up about 96 bucks over here on SMCI. But I do want to see the rest of my trades. Let's take a look at PLTR. Yep, PLTR is still pulling back like I had anticipated, but it did stop us out on that breakout. Maybe I should give it a little bit more room than what I did, correct? BFRG still above, still paying us out that cup of creamer while CERA hasn't even stopped us out. So we're doing A-OK -okay on CERA because we're just trading sideways. We want to see a pop in CERA. Now what about WW? Oh, Weight Watchers. Look like it sold off and is not giving me the pop that I asked for but I'm going to keep an eye on it just to see. So ALGM is just trading sideways. We want to see a nice little pop out of, out of that or we're going to see it drop out of nowhere. So CRUS looks like it's just also trading sideways as well as CLMT. So we're not seeing much. What about XM? So my boy XM is still trading a lot of volume, but nothing happening. And it came back down and tried to touch this $17 area and it's just getting soaked back up. But every time it comes back down here, it gets soaked back up. It's making new lower lows. So we need to keep that in mind. And as we watch this meta on the five minute is looking like it's pushing down. So maybe I should have held on to that a little longer. I'd pretty probably up a lot more money, but that's A-OK, -okay, guys. It's A-OK. -okay. That's part of trading. We'll take the money where I earned it, and we will extrapolate as much cash as we possibly can. So SMCI looks like it is getting that resistance, and this is a very healthy stock. So I'm assuming we're going to see some resistance. We want to see some of that resistance. We want to see it actually play out because stocks don't go straight up. So when we get a big squirt like this, guys, get a big squirt, you better pay yourself. And that's what I'm doing by example right here. I have paid myself already. Now I can bring this up to break even. Why? Well, because break even is where my stop, that's where I bought in for one. And for two, guys, if I break out for stop even, I've already made my money. It's a no sweat play, okay? So let's take a look at MAXN. Let's take a look at MAXN. And then I want to go back to taking a look at this by MAXN. Look what I have set here for MAXN. Why is that set? So let's zoom out and see what is here. So on the hourly, I'm not getting any inclination. So if I zoom out further, well, look at this, guys. MAXN, a gap up on earnings. Whoa, I never looked at my gap ups on earnings and it's up 22%. Where is this thing at on the five minute? Okay, beautiful. So this looks like the five minute gap up on earnings play was right here, guys. Oh, we never went through the gap up earnings list. So this is the gap up on earnings. This is the play. Well, this is the thing, guys, with these gap up earnings. This looks really good. This play is minding itself these tops. So what I want to see this thing for MAXN, which is a solar. Now, what do we know is best for solar? We know when we look at these solar stocks, what is the best? FSLR. So if we look at MAXN, that's going to need plenty of time to ship shape up. But FSLR, look at this. This is the leader. This is already broke out of these areas. This is already holding its highs and it's well, well above the 200, well above its 10, 21, and 30. So if you're looking at MAXN, just know that that is the lagger in our solar stocks as well as ARRY. So MAXN, ARRY are our laggers as to where uh, FSLR is our leaders in the market when it comes to solar. So keep that in mind, guys. Now, MXN could ship shape up right here because it had a nice little earnings, uh, but it didn't beat earnings, nothing like that. It just got a lot of attention. And maybe because that is because there is a leader in the market, which is FSLR, okay? So we'll keep an eye on that for sure. We'll spy play that VWAP band today. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and show you how I do this. So if we bring up the spy because anchored VWAPs, Alex says he likes, over here, if you look, this is the daily. I have a nice anchored VWAP right here. I click anchored VWAP and I go, I click the highs, all right? And I also click anchored VWAP one more time and I click these lows. Now we can go ahead and zoom in on the market. And what do we see? Right here, we have the highs and we have the lows. The lows are at 392 and the highs are at 408. 
So that's what I have for the Anchor View Op. Now you can pull them anywhere you want. You can pull them most recent or the biggest highs and the biggest lows. I like the biggest highs and the biggest lows. So we have an overall average. Now, if you wanna take it off these, that's up to you. That's different ways of doing it. There's different ways of playing everything. So right here on the hourly, I believe this is the hourly. Uh, this is the four hour. Let's zoom into the hourly so you can get a better idea. Here's the hourly, and we're just trading right in the middle here, guys. So it looks like it came down here, touched that on 392. Well, we're just kind of in the middle here. So if you're using anchored view up, you know your levels. 409, that's where you'd probably want to find a short. 392 is probably where you'd want to find a long. If it breaks that 409, you know that things are looking more bullish, okay? So that is how we use the Anchor VWAP, and that's how I use the Anchor VWAP. So if you like it, if you love it, if you want more of it, guys, I'm here every single day, Monday through Friday, 8 until 12. I can bring you the best commentary, the best stock analysis, and I do live trading right here. I lose money. I make money. I do it all, baby. So leave a like. Hit that subscribe button because our goal is to get 25 likes, 25 votes in the poll. And if you're doing it for me, I'm doing it for you, baby. So let's keep on keeping on. And as we talk, SMCI wants to head on higher, baby. Keep printing me that money. Am I gonna feel bad if I got half out? No, absolutely not. I'm happy I got half out. I will always be happy paying myself into these trades. But the rest of this money, the rest of these 10 shares, this is only for that longer term. Hallelujah, take me to heaven kind of money, okay? This is the 10, I got 10 shares. I'm either breaking even on this or this thing wants to take me to the moon, baby. Okay, so SMCI. Guys, we've been watching SMCI for months. And I can say months because this is the second of our next month, guys. I'm getting excited. We're gonna go ahead and stand up. I need to load up some coffee. That's what I like to see. That's what you like to see. SMCI, baby. Smile, smile, looking smitey mygalous. We have to bring this up because I'm getting way too excited, guys. So SMCI, yes, a beautiful trade and it's trying to head higher. It is trading towards those highs. So I'm happy we're still in 10 share size. I'm happy we already paid into this and I'm happy we're bringing our stop right here. Our stop is at 98.39 right where I bought at, well, it's at 98.60. 98.60 is my stop loss so that way we don't ever lose any money on this beautiful trade. So I'm up, I hope you're up. Good morning, let's wake up together every single day, Monday through Friday, eight until 12. Be here, baby. Be here with the whole crew. We got the whole crew in here, guys. So let me see if I can catch up on the chat and then I really want to see if I cannot find some more trades, guys. So good thing I'm out of that meta, right? We've seen things starting to wick off that bottom and now look, if I was in meta, we would have lost even more money. So we're only down $93 in meta. We lost about 160. We fought back. We're down to $93. And it looks like this might be the area. You know, this is like the area to sell. But with the overall market looking like it's heating up, it looks like it's going to get bought up and try to head into that higher area. Now, I still think shorts could be a play. Because why? Well, after a huge sell-off like this, we usually do get a pop. We usually do get a pop out of the indices because of we usually get a pop out of anything that sells off, guys. It doesn't ever go straight down or straight up, right? You've heard that saying. So when we look at stuff like this and we see things breaking down really hard, we're expecting them to pop up. We're not expecting them to go straight up or straight down. We're expecting them to find those levels. Well, right above us on the queues, we have this level right above us. So I'm still here for the short, okay? I am still here for the short, but I need to wait for my levels to make that money. Okay, so RBL, RBLX I need to take a look at. So RBLX is almost right in that area where I wanna short, and I'm gonna go ahead and just take this short right now, and we're gonna take just a small share size of 25. I remember yesterday, it was a little too chunky for me in that 100, but we're gonna take 25 shares short right here. Even though the overall market looks like it's pushing up, Meta leaks looks like it's at those areas it wants to be shorted. So let me go ahead and put my RBLX trade on here. Let's take a look at how PLTR would have ship shaped up. Yep, we would still be in the money on this, and I would still be holding short if I was in PLTR, but I am not, guys. It stopped me out for a cup of coffee. Speaking of cup of coffee, let me take a sip. Look at BFRG. So we took this breakout this morning, and it looks like it is ship shaping up. Remember, guys, this is an AI stock. So so whenever I look at BFRG, if I expect something to happen, I think AI is our leader, but it is breaking down. And as AI, the stock starts to break down, it looks like BFRG is pushing more to the north side. 
So that's a very interesting correlation with our leader breaking down, our lagger is starting to pop up. So might this something come of this? Might something be fruitful? Well, we all like to see new IPOs. We like to see basis and we're not seeing a base really on the daily right now. We're only seeing it on the hourly. So when I look at this on the hourly, we're playing on the five minute, playing on the hourly, and we're gonna take our money as it moves. So right now we are in it at 420. It's trading at 427 right now. So good for us. All right, I need to go through the indices, guys. I need to go through the indices and then we will catch up on chat. I know I've been pretty far back on chat, guys. So bear with me because I wanna make sure I need to make sure absolutely that I am doing what I want to do so I can keep myself happy first and foremost, right? We want to make sure that the trades I am and I understand what's going on so that way I can broadcast the right information to you. So it looks like we are getting a pop in the IWM, but we are seeing a little bit of wicking off in the top and it's to be expected. That pop is going to be met with some resistance. Netflix broke down and is popped back up into that area. We're going to see this thing sell off. Only time will tell. And as we talk, Microsoft looked like it touched that liquidity area below and now is trying to push higher. So is this going to push back up into its resistance and then sell off? Time is going to need it to tell as Amazon, the old pooper scooper of a stock trading now below that $93 area. So Amazon, is it going to soak back up and head back up higher or is it going to push up higher and then sell off once again? And as we speak, we're going to take a look at Meta and Meta pushing back up into that area, pushing even higher, trying to stay well above that BWAP area. So let's take a look at, okay, now look, I drew this out for you guys. It looks like NVIDIA is pushing right up into that downtrend area. So this might be a nice area for a short for me. This is my place, not yours. So just take a look guys. Every time this, this thing traded sideways and it broke up through and it came back down and tested this area and it's pushed back up. Now, to me, this looks like this could be somewhat of a head and shoulders or an inverse head and shoulders, but this never made it back down to test this area. It held, it went back up into the supply, this thing might sell off in this area. But remember, with the overall market being strong um, or weak, NVIDIA is always look stronger while the overall market has been weak. So even in a weak market, NVIDIA still could push higher, but we will see, only time is going to tell, okay? So, Let's see, uh, Tesla, good old Uncle Tesla. So we know that Tesla started to break down here, okay? And as it started to break down, I was telling you guys, if it breaks this support area of 183, 185-ish area, we have a possibility of coming all the way down to this 175. That's where its next support is. So keep in mind, guys, we've been talking about this since yesterday, uh, maybe in the day before, that if it broke this area, uh, even this area, this 186, that we had the opportunity to head lower. So just be careful, guys, okay? So let's try and catch up. Tesla is retesting. Yes, sir, it is retesting. Uh, but uh, that, that might be its resistance now. Because remember, if it's retesting, it's what used to be support, it's now resistance. So support is resistance, resistance is support, depending on which side you break on it. So that's why we that's why we use that perfect two hundred dollar moving or two hundred dollar level as an example. So I need I, I really need to stay focused here just for a minute, guys. We got IWM trading at one eighty seven right on that area, right on that line. Three hundred nine on Netflix, trying to hold that base. Two fifty two on Microsoft. It looks like it got soaked up in the supply area, but will it hold? That's the real question. As Amazon looks like it's soaking back up, right back into that supply area, and Meta looks like it is failing in this area, just trying to hold that, um, trying to hold that, that um, VWAP area. But you guys got to understand like back here, I'm not even, uh, right back here. I mean, we have areas, you know, that, that meta, like it's just stuck in between these two areas. It really is. It's stuck in between that 185 and that 179 area. And I think that's, what's making this thing just kind of weeble wobble and bounce right here. Um, so we will see, we will definitely see what Meta wants to bring, but I think if it gets right up into this 184, I think that's gonna be um, a really uh, tough area. So RBLX is pushing up higher now, so we're in small share size. I took small because I want to be able to take more share size when it gets up higher. So this thing is looking good. I'd like to see it get up a little bit higher than this, like say up to this 4190 before I uh, get in fully short. So what I'll do is I will just put another 25 shares right here to sell the market. 
uh, once it gets up into this area. And if it hits, it hits. If not, then I'm gonna be in this size, okay? And it'll alert me once RBLX gets there. And then I'll put another alert above it so that way we don't lose track of what's going on. So, um, yeah, so when it comes to this meta, guys, uh, Meta's pushing back up here. Let me, you know what? Let me go ahead and take a look at the chat, guys. So we looked at Anchor VWAP. Uh, let's see, congrats on, hey, thank you for the congratulations, guys. It's always nice to see uh, the guy that you're watching making a little bit of money, you know what I mean? It's always nice. Uh, let's see, uh, Spun VWAP Band of the Day. Mine is based on a session, I think, hourly or so. Uh, been good, chilling with us all. Good luck to the rest of the day. I seem to do better when I'm not constantly looking at the portfolio. Yeah, sometimes that always is better. Take a trade, know what you're risking, set your risk and walk away. Set it and forget it, some people like to say, you know? Set it and forget it. So, uh, let's see here, guys. Let's see, let's see what we got in the chat. We got, don't jinx it, Sim. TRK is moving up. <laughs> Uh-oh. And now I said it out loud in chat. I hope I didn't jinx it. Uh, let's see. Is playing that Roblox more than the kids? Hey, <laughs> Alex, that's a good one. That's so true. I am playing Roblox more than the kids play the Roblox. And that's the whole reason why I'm trying to short this thing, because I don't believe in this company at all. Um, I am a little biased in it, and I know that. But... Uh, I do like taking the shorts on Roblox because I, I, I think that these guys are just selling off into this area. I think it's a good uh, head and shoulders pattern, which uh, is also the Wyckoff pattern, uh, meaning that uh, 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 it creates a head and shoulders and that's just showing a, a, a clear out of liquidity, okay? So just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, be really careful when you're in these because uh, this thing really could take off. Uh, I was saying this morning, you know, it's holding the support in, in a pullback, in a downtrend in the market. So when it does that, you know, we got we to gotta understand that that is a strong si sign. So what, what am I doing still constantly trying to short this thing when I'm telling you it's a strong sign? Well, it's, it's probably my bias is what's doing it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my bias doesn't get in the way and I set a stop loss at these highs, right? here okay set a stop loss right here for 25 and another one just above it at 25 and so that way if it does push up and clear that high then I will be out so no big deal yeah I like that it's a good saying Alex that's hilarious that is hilarious Let's see, can Meta get back up into my area that I want? Goodness gracious. So let's take a look and see what we got coming out for the economic news because at 10.30, at 10 o'clock, we know Papa Powell came out. Now we have the job job openings, the JOL or the JOLTS at 10 o'clock, which also already came out. And now at 10.30, we have the crude oil inventories that came out and it came out at negative 1.69 uh, percent with the forecast being 0.39. So um, it looks like uh, crude oil inventories came in uh, higher than expected. So Meta now pushing up into its highs. Do I try to take a high of day short? Well, let's just take a peek again or maybe we can get a couple bucks out of it. We'll push it up into that area and we'll see if we can use this high of day as our stop loss on this. And if it wants to break me out, then our last trade will be up there uh, in this 184 area. So let's see, we got, uh, we got a little pullback here. We're gonna see what it wants to give us. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take out 50. We'll get uh, 50 shares out now, pay ourselves right now into this trade. So we're gonna buy back 50 shares of this, make a dollar 50. We're gonna see, hold on to that other 50 shares. We made about $3 there. We're gonna hold on to that last little bit and see what happens for us. So. Are we gonna get that pullback that I'm expecting in the market after I push? Only time is going to tell, ladies and gentlemen, so we will see as the SPY looks like it is also giving us a little pullback at those highs, but will it push higher, will it prevail, will we see this thing through? Only time is gonna tell, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm glad to be here and I'm glad you are here with me because trading can be lonely sometimes. It's always nice to have a few friends backing you up, watching you trade, and talking that talk, guys, because if you didn't have somebody to talk with, if you don't have like-minded traders, then how are we supposed to bounce ideas? How are we supposed to get any better? Ladies and gentlemen, I am just so pumped to be here. So we're gonna see if this trade wants to work out as the SPY wants to head higher. That is starting to scare me out of this Microsoft trade, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this trade with a $5 win right there, and watch, it'll probably flush out here as well, but it's okay, we are fighting back from a losing trade. 
trade. So we want, I know we want to see that 184. That's my main goal is that 184. And better yet, this is what I'm going to do, guys, just because I obviously am not staying disciplined to my true levels. And I keep wanting to get in and out, in and out. I'm going to go ahead and put 50 shares short right here at that 184 area. If we could push up to that 184, if I get that one quick little spurt to that 184, that's where I wanna take a short, that's where I wanna make a trade, and I'm gonna take 50 shares there, and I'm gonna do my best to hold on to that area. So, posted my chart for the SPY on Discord, make sure to join, breaking my golden zone there. Hey, heck yeah, guys, if you wanna join our Discord, be more than welcome to, everything is free. All the content that I bring, all the camaraderie that we bring, everything is free, guys, every single thing. So the Discord's free, you know, any source or sites that I'm looking or using are usually free. Um, the only thing I really pay for is my back test data. When I use, when I, uh, when I save all my trades and I go through them every day to see how I did for the day, where I can lose less money, where I can make more money, I take that area and I say, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to pay for this. And I pay about $100 a month or $100 a year for that data service. And I, uh, uh, Stu can agree with me. It's absolutely invaluable. Um, you have to have something that it's so valuable to you as a trader. So uh, keep that in mind, guys. Okay. So it looks like QQQs is just sitting at its highs right now, but we're going to look at TR. TRKA. So TRKA, yes, is giving you that push as we talked about in pre-market. We know that there, there has the ability to have a nice little push right up into this 50 cent area. So keep that in mind, guys, that, you know, um, we're starting to see, you know, a lot of sell off. We're starting to see some volume come in here. Just keep in mind this 50 cent area is very, very scary area. There's a lot of bag holders and I know there might be some in this chat room. So if there are, just be careful in TRKA. If you're starting to see some push, you know, and you're down too much, then, you know, you do do your thing. Well, says I'm back. Excellent connection. Get rid of them dang circles. Let's go. We need to be back on stream and kicking some butt. All right. There we go. We are back, baby. Goodness, guys, thank you for sticking with me. It doesn't look like many of you stick stuck around, but if you come back and you're just joining me back again, I'm Dave. I'm with Lo-Fi Trading. Good morning, good morning. Let me take a look at the Discord. So we got uh, we got Mikey in there. Let's take a look at this Discord. Uh, Duality Dad, LOL. What? Uh, let's take a look. Black, uh, my boy Black just... Uh, Nice job. Nice job on that trade there. We got Blacktricity go ahead and throw in this EDBL short out. He caught it up here and he played it using probably 480 as his risk. And then he took the short out after this huge liquidity push down. Awesome job on that one, brother. You love to see it. Um, the Black uh, Tricity, you should join and you should start posting in, in our Discord, brother. Our Discord is actually in the description page in our YouTube. So go ahead and check that out, man, and start posting your charts uh, in the Discord, in the general chat, guys. Uh, we want to see your charts. You know, mark them up. Let us know what you're looking at. Um, but yeah, we're back, baby. We're back, baby. That's what we do. We bring it back. We bring it back. We'll always be here. We'll always be bringing it back, baby. So let me just make sure I have everything up and everything. Okay, good. We're good to go. 100%, guys. We're back. Now I know how to do streams. That's why. Remember that last hiccup yesterday? Well, guess what? Now we know how to fix it, right? Who does Daddy J have to talk to when I'm driving home? <laughs> well, we're back. So make sure you guys hit that live button. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe button. Probably the worst time to ask is right now after a hiccup giggle in this chat, but that's a-okay because we are B-A-C-K. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dave. This is Lo-Fi Trading. I'm here every single day, Monday through Friday, 8 until 12. We had a hiccup yesterday before stream started. Now we had a hiccup today after stream started, before market opened. Now we had a hiccup today, right now, but we learned from yesterday's mistake and guess what? We're back up. We didn't have to bring up a whole new broadcast or a whole new stream. We're learning every single day. We're going to get better every single day. So thank you for sticking with me, guys. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and look at the indices to get a catch up on what is going on. So we got the IWM actually making that pullback. It's going to come back and retest that area to see if it wants to hold. Uh, Netflix at those peaks, it looks like it's doing a nice little pullback. Maybe it'll come back to view up. Well, Microsoft had a nice little push back up into that view up and now is also pulling back. Same with Amazon. It looks like it's trying to pull back or maybe hold those tops there. 
and it looks like Meta is still pulling back from those highs. So risking that high would have been a great trade, but like I said, it's fighting in this little battle zone right here. No big deal. Uh, Terry Robb, good to see you. Terry Robb, Terry Roberto, a good friend of mine. And uh, I got it right here, Terry. I got that note. Thank you so much for coming over yesterday. We already ordered the mic. Terry Rob, Mr. Rapito, Mr. Rapito Terry. He came over to help this stream out because we are like-minded individuals. We all want to help each other out. And that's why we're growing this ever-growing community, guys. That's why we keep on growing. And then my boy Terry Rob came over here, hit some slaps, played some drums, just like I always love to hear him do. And then he took a look at my setup and he goes, hey man, let's get this audio quality up for cheap. So I ordered a nice audio quality mic and I'm hoping that you will love it just as much as I love doing these streams, guys. So we're always gonna be upgrading, we're always gonna be do better, and we're always gonna have hiccups, but we can always do a little giggle after the hiccup. Hiccup, giggle, if you will. So, hell yeah, great to hear, love you, bud. Terry, you know I love you, brother. That's why I gave you the biggest hug I possibly could because I don't know when the next time I'm gonna see you is. I'm hoping next week. I'm hoping next week we can go for that little walk and have a nice little chiggity chat because those are always making me feel better. RBLX trading at 41.81. We got meta right here at 182.80. Is it going to bounce off this VWAP area? It does look pretty strong uh, in this in this uh, market that we had such a big pullback. Um, we're going to see what meta wants to do, but if it wants to hold above this VWAP area, this might be a nice area to get in. And those are my thoughts, not yours. But guys, if we look doesn't look like a ton of sell-off volume happened there. Now, I could be wrong. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of looking at this thing as it is. But, you know, uh, the sell-off in the, in the morning wasn't nearly as much as, uh, you know, I uh, anticipated. So maybe they're, they're waiting for exactly what I am, the big shorts. And they're waiting for this thing to head on up and get smacked in the face. So let's take a look at TSLA for my boy Alex. And if I missed anything, guys, if I missed anything, let me know. I, I 12 years old, went out for a smoke break. Of course he did. I hope you don't get sick. Uh, yes, we are back, baby. We are back skis. That's right. Uh, by the way, the Discord link in the address, not the actual link. Not sure if they are able to join from there. Oh, I'm learning every single day, guys. So I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, in the, I'm gonna have to fix the link. Uh, Alex, if you get a second, will you just put that up in the uh, in the chat for me? Uh, it looks like Gary says spy puts today. Gary, welcome. It's good to see you, brother. Thanks for watching the show. Yeah, if we look at the spy, um, Gary, where'd you get in? Goodness gracious. Um, probably right here. Gary, the man, the myth, the legend, created one of the most perfect human beings I've ever met on my life. So that's why I decided to marry her. But anyway, guys, we're right up to that 400 area, and it looks like we are seeing quite a bit of resistance. So, is the SPY going to want to hold up in this area, or is it going to want to head lower? But, as you know, under that 400 psychological area, that might be an area where it does want to head lower. Now, we talked about this before on chat, guys. We talked about those 400 psychological areas, and it looks like it is using it as that. And it's starting to head on lower. So will it want to ship shape up above VWAP or is it going to break on and head on lower? Well, we know when Papa Powell talked, it did one of these things just like yesterday. But this time, it got soaked back up. And it might be because in pre-market, we looked at all the different indices, all the heavier weighted indices. And we noticed on these charts that they were all reaching an area of interest, a pivot, if you will. And every single one of these, if they weren't at their pivot, they traveled to their pivot and bounced off of it. It. Now, is it going to hold those pivots and head higher? Well, they bounced. Some of them bounced off those pivots and now we're back into that same supply area where they sold off. So what I was expecting in the market is a bounce first thing in the morning, a bounce up to these areas. But instead, we had a quick sell off. Now we're getting that bounce into those areas. And now from there, are we going to see that sell off that I had anticipated? Or are we going to continue either trading sideways or higher? There's only three options, guys, and that's what we're here to find out. So Tesla looks like it's actually building a little range here under that VWAP. This might be, uh, you know, it trying to digest this. But like I told you guys in the morning, this thing can still come all the way down to this 174 area. PLTR at its lowest, question mark, PLTR. So I don't know if it's at its lowest or at its highest, but this is its support area, right? If like if you draw a few lines across this, you can see that these are its support area. So it looks like it's trying to break down in the support area. Now we might get a nice little pop here, but after all of this sell off, if it comes right here, this might even break down lower, okay? And if we look actually on the daily, this thing doesn't move a whole lot. This thing only moves 5.9%, and right now it's already given you a move of 411. So 
either this thing is gonna stutter step out or we're gonna see an even bigger move to the south side. So right here is a pivot. It might go higher here or it might go much, much lower. Let's go over my trades really quick, guys. So I always like to start off with the spy in the top right hand side to see where it is trading just above VWAP at 398.62. Next trade is XM, still trading sideways. You know, we've already paid ourselves into this trade. We're already up 10 bucks and we're up another seven in this trade. So if it comes back down to break even, that's a-okay with me, guys. We are defending that 10 and 21 day moving average on the daily. CLMT just trading sideways as well. CRUS is showing us a little pop. We're only up about five bucks in this trade. This is just the cup and handle that I've been bragging and talking about for so long. I want to catch a good one. ALGM, you see me in pre-market yesterday, or not pre-market, during yesterday buying those lows because I liked where it sat, but I did not get match in. Why? Because I'm playing the cup and handle, but the 10 day moving average is still a little extended. So I only got in 10 shares. Yes, I am very much willing to add more shares into this as long as it keeps shaping up. But for now, we're going to manage our risk is small share size. So next up is JSPR. JSPR is breaking down here and we do, uh, we do not like it uh, trading in this area. Why don't I like it trading in this area? Because look how long it's traded in this dang area for, guys. I don't want my money being held up this long. I don't wanna have to sit here and think about this trade this long. No, absolutely not. So what am I using? 10 day moving average. This is the 10 day moving average right here at its lows. If it breaks that 10 day moving average, I want out of this stupid trade, right? This is just a breakout, just like you'll see me play on many, many other trades. So we have 50 shares up and we are 50 shares long. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna set my risk right here to sell at 190. So if this stock does wanna come back down and retest this area and break through it, well, guess who is out of the stock on small share size? This guy, this guy is. So. Quick sip, Shawana. Mm. All right, cool. Well, maybe I can do that really quick uh, for you, Alex. I do appreciate you trying. Let me see if this one works, guys. So I'm gonna post the Discord link in the chat. You're more than welcome to join, guys. It's completely free. All we do is uh, make sure that we go over, you know, uh, trades. If you want to post your charts or anything like that in there, you're more than welcome to, and we can comment on them. Uh, we try to stay as positive as we can. Of course, you're always going to get a little negativity, but the haters are going to hate. But that's okay. We try to keep it positive, guys. So if you want to, go ahead and join the Discord. It is in the chat right down there below. Okay. And while you're there, make sure you vote on the on the. Uh, on the poll, guys, we only need one more vote and we'll be all set and I can close that down. Also, while you're there, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, guys, because we are here every single day, Monday through Friday, 8 until 12, giving you the best commentary and stock analysis that you can bring. Now, look at Meta. If we look at Meta on the five minute, you can see this uptrend here. Is it going to hold this uptrend just at VWAP or is it going to continue to break down? Now, if I would have just held out and said, yeah, I'm going to play this double top and I'm not going to let it go, well, guess who would be up a lot more money right now? This guy would. But that's part of trading and that's why I do it for you because it is extremely hard to do okay guys extremely hard to do so if you want to learn how to trade I suggest using paper trading first so you get out all the quirks and then if you start actually doing trading live trading like this if you're doing it in front of you or for yourself or whatever what you need to do is manage your risk because if you're not managing your risk then you don't know what the heck is going on so let's keep on going through my trades because I got a few other beautiful ones that I want to go over now we are up about five dollars on RBLX you guys know I'm trying to short this thing as Alex says I play Roblox more than the kids play Roblox right BFRG is now taking off to the north side. If you guys remember this morning, I took a small five shares on this at 420. Why did I take it at 420? Well, simply enough, that was the breakout area. I don't want to be any lower into that unless it's around that $4 area. So 20 cents of risk on BFRG and this thing is taking off higher. So where can BFRG go? Who knows? It's a new IPO. It doesn't have much information on it, but I like that basic pennant forming on a uh, uh, bullish pennant forming. So that's why we're in it and that's why we're winning money. All right, let's look at RBLX. We're up about $8 now on RBLX. SERA, as you guys know, if SERA wants to break that 10 day moving average, guess who's gone? Me, I am, goodbye. So let's take a look at Weight Watchers, it hasn't given me that pop that I wanted. I wanted to short the living crap out of this thing today. I'd be up a couple hundred bucks if it would at least have gotten up to that 6.5 area, but it did not. So therefore my play was diminished and we could not take the trade, no big deal. Next up is JSPR, we already went over that. 
Let's look at ALGM. We're up about $7.80 on this trade. That's A-OK, -okay, guys. We're looking for the longer run on this. I think it's going to take a lot more time to ship shape up because this stock only moves 3.4%. So that gives us plenty of time to learn, understand, and feel this baby girl out. So that way, we can go ahead and take her higher when she's ready. So once this thing gives me a little bit more time, I'm going to add into this trade. I'd like to get another 10 shares in here, but I'm in no rush because that 10-day moving average on the bottom right-hand side is not holding up or if it doesn't hold up I won't be in it CRUS we're up a cup of coffee CLMT we're up a cup of oh, we're down a cup of coffee uh, XM we're still up six dollars fifty three cents but I'm gonna go ahead and put my last 35 at break even so that way if it does want to break down these areas I'm out for pretty close to break even I'm gonna give it a little bit more room but if it wants to stop me out for a break even we've already made a few bucks on this trade uh, it's unfortunate how long it actually took us because I, I, I wanted this XM to really really take off guys so that's okay that's part of trading so uh, where is is it not in here I got uh, SMCI and it's not even on here let me put it on here SMCI so let's bring up SMCI. So SMCI is still doing great, guys. We're up 120 bucks on this trade. Absolutely beautiful. It actually held this area. So if you guys remember, it pushed right up in to that, uh, into that VWAP area on the daily, that 101. You guys see me, I started taking 50, or I took out half of my shares in that area because I want to pay myself into those liquidity pushes. And if it's into resistance, I definitely want to pay myself. So that's exactly what I did here, guys. I paid myself half. I paid over half, actually. I took out 15 shares. So we locked in about a $50 profit, and now we're still playing with another 10 shares. So we're still up another $48 on those last 10 shares. So we're just going to hold on to this because this is a longer term trade. The why I took this trade is because it got really, really tight here on this 10 day moving average. And as you can see, the range went from 100 to 95. The next day it was 90, 99 to 95. The next day it was 99 to 97. And then it got so tight. This thing pinched down on that 10 day moving average. And that's why we bought it yesterday. Uh, yesterday towards uh, the middle of the day somewhere. I marked out right here where we got in this 38, 43-ish uh, area. We're in actually at 38.60. So that's where I got in. And this is one of those Christian Quillamagi breakout type trades. It pushes up higher, it pulls back, it rides a 10-day moving average, and then it takes off higher. So I've been studying these for like two years now, guys, and they only work in bull markets. Now, we are looking like we are in a bull market. It can be argued, of course, everything is relative, but when you see new lower highs on the daily, when you start seeing new lower highs on the hourly, right here are your lower highs. When you see that you're trading above the 200-day moving average, that shows me that things are ship shaping up. So when I look at all this stuff, guys, and I want to find these best, the, the strongest stocks in the market. That's SMCI, that's FSLR, that is, uh, that is IBKR, that's AMR, that's MNDY. These are all the stocks that are trading relatively strong while your market, your 401k started to fail. These stocks held up strong. Okay, guys? So keep that in mind. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we got going on, guys. What do we have going on? Yeah, SMCI is, you know, I really, I hope I wake up tomorrow and this thing is just on a parabolic to the north side, heading higher, so far away from that 10 day. We're hoping the 10 day will catch up so I could take more money, right? So let's go ahead. I need to run through the indices and then I want to see how, uh, uh, see if I can't get into some more trades. So yeah, we got uh, plenty of the pullback that I was uh, anticipating, but I did not take my trades on these pullbacks. Um, we had a little bit in, I mean, we're, we're in Roblox, we're in, you know, quite a, quite a few other trades. Um, NVIDIA, look at NVIDIA just tapping that, uh, that top right there. Look at it. And I drew this and I drew this for you guys out in pre-market when we seen it starting ahead, I said, well, if NVIDIA comes up, it's going to make a new lower high or a new higher low. And that's exactly what it did here. So this might be a nice little area to take a short on if you're willing to risk this $2 for possibly, uh, let's see. Five dollars, so two to five. You know, uh, that's a good risk reward, and uh, you know, I'll just take it here for, for you guys. I'll just take five shares. Um, so risk in ten, basically, in this area, we're gonna risk ten uh, to to try and make. Uh, let's see, that would be five. So three. Um, let's see if we want it to come all the way back down to thirty-three. 
uh, 25. We're risking five bucks, or we're risking 10 to make 25, so that's a one, uh, one to like three point whatever risk reward, 1.2.5, whatever. Uh, it's, it's higher than one to one, and that's what I need, okay? So let's catch up on the chat. PLTR at the lowest, that's the last thing we did. That one works, thank you. Alex, Oxy Puts, Oxy Puts, he's liking those Oxy Puts. All right, so let's take a look at Oxy over here. So it looks like he wants to take a short on those Oxy Puts. So you, I hope you already have those oxy puts because right now it is pushing lower. It is pushing very low, and it looks like that was a nice place to take it too, right there at that 63.50, looking absolutely scrumptious. But I need to go through really quick the indices. I really need to get a better understanding of what's going on so I can take my own trades. Uh, looks like we're bouncing off that. I need to go to the hourly. Let's see what we got, guys. Let's see what we got, baby. So Netflix looks like it's still trying to trying to find its love right here. If not, that $300 area is gonna be very, very important. So Microsoft had that little pullback, it got soaked up down here, and now it's just trading sideways. So this might be a nice little push for Microsoft, but that's that's gonna need more time to tell. Amazon still trading in its supply area, could possibly break down. As to where Meta is just lingering here, I mean, it's really just hanging out, um, which is showing to me that that's pretty strong. You know, if Meta actually wants to just hang out here while the overall market's pulling back, uh, that's a good sign. Um, NVIDIA's pulling back. Let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla looks like it's just trading sideways. It doesn't want to break any lower than this, okay? Uh, it, it's getting really close to that area, uh, but it's, it's still under VWAP, and I think it's building new lower highs right now on the five minute. Let's take a look at the hourly here, though. The hourly looks like it wicked off on that bottom. That looks pretty good. Let's take a look at Apple though, guys. So we know Apple was at its base, at its support right here, and it looks like it did give us a nice little pop. Give us a nice little pop, and then it gave us a wick off on this top. So we need to be careful right here. Same, same goes for Apple. We need to be careful in these areas. Google on my watch list, Tesla waiting. Alex Tesla heard you were moving a little, had a hangover. So Google on watch list, says Joshi. Yeah, heck yeah on Google. So let's see if, uh, G O O G L. Let's see. What am I doing? What am I doing? G O O G L. There we go. And we're gonna bring up R B L X over here. So we're up about five bucks on the R B L X trade, but man, this thing really, you know, this thing isn't doing what I want it to do. It's just trading. It's just hanging out in these areas up top. You know, I expect this thing to head a heck of a lot lower, but you know, it's just lingering in this area, which is showing strength, showing relative strength. So Google looks like it's running right back up into its resistance area. Right here is its resistance, right at that 95 area, okay? So I don't know what you're looking at, Joshi, but what I'm looking at is we have a nice push right into its supply area. So this might look like it's gonna go down here. I could be wildly wrong. It could ship shape up and push on higher and have a nice little breakout here, but uh, it, there is resistance. So be careful if you're looking for longs, but always be careful if you're looking on the short side too, guys. So, let's see. So overall, the market's just trading sideways, guys, overall. Um, so on that poll, we need one more vote to see what you guys think. We gotta love you in here. Let's see if we can get one more vote on that poll and we can go ahead and get anything that you guys wanna see. Anything that you guys wanna see. You need to put that in the chat, okay? Cause there's, I'm only here until noon. You got me here for one more hour. If you want commentary, if you want analysis, or you just want some live trading, well stick around guys, that's what I do. Monday through Friday, eight until 12, baby. So hit that like, hit that subscribe, and make sure you vote on the poll. I won't ask of anything of you except for that. So, thank you for being here. Do appreciate your time. Let's see, stop loss at 93.5 for an up move. So let's look at Google. And he's looking for an up move on this, okay? And your risk is 93.50. So 93.50, so, okay, I see. So I think you're looking for a longer term, um, you're looking for a longer up move, right? Uh, Joshi, um, I'm, I'm assuming you're gonna try and play this off a of base. I would say your entry is more down here at this 94. Uh, this 94 rather than these breakouts at the top, but that's just my personal opinion. I could be wildly wrong um, This does look like it's running to a resistance area now I do want this thing to go higher of course 
Yeah, I'm okay. You're waiting for it. You're, so you're trying to take a break out. That's cool. That's totally understandable. Risking that 94. Just give yourself some room down here. Um, yeah, you, you did. You said 93.5, which is beautiful. Okay, Joshi, I'm right here with you. I like the trade. That looks beautiful. I wish the absolute best of luck to you. Um, I do. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that you have wide risk. I don't like the breakout trades so much personally anymore because they just don't work out for me. So instead of taking breakouts, a lot of the times I'll, I'll wait for a moving average, but I uh, totally like your idea and I really do hope to see Google. I'm a fanboy of Google. I like Google. I'd like to see it go up as long as the rest of the markets are going up with it. So it looks like Apple is still trading sideways. Uh, let's see the Qs. Looks like the Qs are finding a bid. It's starting to look like we're getting a push after those big wicks. So, and we know that Meta held off that whole stinking time right here, right in this area, making new higher lows. I mean, this is a really bullish sign for a lot of these stocks. And uh, you know, same thing with Roblox, RBLX. Uh, if we're starting to see all this, you know, heavy sediment, you know, I don't want to be in these shorts um, now. I have my stop loss. I'm already in the trade. I've been shooken out many, many times. So, you know, I have to take the loss on this trade. If it comes, I can't just get out of this trade anymore. I'm in this trade. Uh, and unless something really serious comes up where it's like, oh no, you know, um, you know, I have to get out of this trade, but I'm in small share size. I've taken the, I have taken my risk and it is what it is. So unless this market really starts to, uh, really starts to show me, um, that it wants to go up, then you know that that's that's when I'll, I'll make my move. But by that time, I'll probably already be out of RBLX. So let's take a look at SMCI again. All right, it's still trying to hold those areas. We didn't get a huge sell off in that area. That's really really good, um, especially if you look in this area here. All of your uh, sell offs are on small uh, small volume. All your pushes are on higher volume. So that's a really good sign for me. So I'm definitely gonna be holding off on that. Now, SPY looks like it's starting to curl here. It's finding some good support on that VWAP. Um, we have a big wick off on this bottom. You can tell a lot of buying up in that area. So we wanna look at what is hot and let's see what NVDA looks like right now. Oh, I did take a short on NVDA. So here's the thing, guys. This is what's great. So if the market decides to head on higher and stop me out of NVIDIA because the overall market is looking good, well, NVIDIA, is the best looking uh, stock that I have found in the market that and meta that are holding up with the overall pullback. Okay, so if if the overall market's gonna do good and it's gonna take off here and get me out of this trade, then I'm gonna wanna reverse this and I'm gonna wanna take this for the long side because this would be a nice little breakout. Now, this isn't a breakout of highs, don't get that confused. This is a breakout of a third lower high. Okay, so it's a little different on that trade. So if this wants to break me out for a very small stop loss, I might wanna switch this, see if it wants to shape shape up here because this might be the new push. This might be the new breakout, the new higher high that we want to see in NVDA. Always watching our back, always minding our risk, and always being careful while we're out here, guys. Always, always, always. Let's see. We want to be out if it clears 240.20. So we're going to look for 240.20 on this. 240.20 right here. We're going to put our stop loss right there and we send it. All right. So that's my stop loss. I'm still going to hold out. I'm not going to get shaken out at all today. Um, it looks like my, um, it looks like my think or swim may have frozen up. So we're going to go ahead and excuse me, guys, don't freak out the black, the black screen of death. No. All right. It looks like it fixed itself. That's good. Thank you. I just had to threaten it. That's all. All right, we're gonna end this poll, guys. It looks like 38% say green, 29% say, uh, say it is gonna end red. And right now where we're at, we're just trading sideways, guys. We haven't made much of anything. So with that poll, 24, per, uh, 24 volts in this poll, and it looks like uh, 37 say green, 29 say red, and 20% say sideways. So we are all a mixed bag. And 12% just say you're here for the stock picks. That's funny. I don't want anybody here for stock picks though, guys. We're not here for stock picks. We are simply here to do our due diligence so we can take our own trade. So that was a trick question. And uh, if you're still here with me, this one's for you. Cheers. New vision. Heck yeah. Tesla out the gates. So let's see Tesla. And it looks like SPY is holding. Tesla is pushing. That looks really good. Need some more volume here. NVDA trying. It might break through. 
That might be a golden one. This could be a great day. The Spy might take back all of its losses. We can see. Look at Meta. Meta's trying to push too, guys. NVDA. Let's take a look at RBLX. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. RBLX pushing. They're all trying to push. Let's see. Where will this take us? Apple looks like it's giving a nice little push. Google, big push there. Uh, looks like finally out and done with TRK. Good for you. Don't hold your breath so long, Amire. Little L L a PLTR for a long position today, question mark. So it looks like we're all talking about some of the same stocks. So it looks like PLTR. So PLTR at this base, it looks like you have a risk that you could use. So that is completely up to you. If you want to use that as risk, you can. But this thing only moves 5.9% in a day. So keep that in mind. It is a relatively slow mover. So I almost feel like I want to bring my stop loss from that top down to this base now. Uh, it's making me a little bit nervous there. No big deal. No big deal. Just going to bite my fingers. Uh, let's see. The SPY. The SPY looks like it is getting that push, but nothing's crazy happening here. You know, it... It hasn't made its highs yet or its lows. I mean, it's just trading sideways, so nothing crazy for the SPY. Let's take a look at the Qs, which is more tech heavy, and it looks like the Qs are holding out. They are pushing towards those highs, and it looks stronger than the overall market. So if you're looking at tech, like a Tesla weighted or Amazon or Meta, this is the Qs. The Qs actually hold a lot of those heavier tech weighted uh, names, and it looks like here, um, that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing that Meta is doing a nice little pushy push to the high side. And remember, um, uh, let me uh, bring up Meta actually instead of look at the cues. Meta's having this nice little push up to the to the north side. We got lots of wicks up there on that. Um, so keep that in mind, guys. Oh, another big wick here. It doesn't look like it's wanting to get above that. Um, so we're we're really we're really at a pivotal moment. We're just trading sideways. Not a whole lot going on, and I think we can see that in the um, in the actual uh, in the stream today, guys. Uh, we can get the sentiment of how volatile the market's going to be with how many people are in here at once, which is crazy, and it's really good uh, somebody who does stream and does commentary to know and learn that because uh, then I can know where the volatility is going to be, where it's going to land. If there's a lot more people that are getting excited about the stream, there's probably a lot more people trading in the market. So let's catch up on chat just to make sure. Yeah. So Joshi, I really like that trade. I really like the trade idea found. I'm glad you're out of TRKA. Uh, took the hit moving on. That's the best way to do it. Um, and you're moving on quick, Amire. If you're talking about UNCY already. <laughs> oh, you're break even? 416 break even. Oh, br uh, that means break even, uh, Amire. Alex is uh, B slash E is break even, guys. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, B E is break even. U N C Y. We can take a look at U N C Y. Sure. U N C Y. So we got U N C Y right over here, and we've been watching U N C Y for about three days now, ever since it joined its inception. Now we talked about U N C Y that this was showing a nice little base here at 125, but I said I wanted it to see it come back and retest that base. So it did. It came back and retest that base in pre-market. And now it pushed up trading at 158. There's not a lot of information on this stock. It's only been up here for three days, but it is holding those gains. If a stock holds its gains, it has the ability to move more. So we want to see this thing trading sideways above 125 and possibly catch a bid using that 125 as our risk if we can catch it low enough and close enough to it. So UCNY, if we want to see this, this therapeutic stock head on higher, even though it is a low flow piece of crap, we're going to need the same see this ship shape up before it will head higher. So that is my take on UNCY. And if you guys see something that you want me to take a look at, just throw it up in chat and I will go over it no matter how good or bad this stock is. I will give you my honest opinion. Now, if we look at GH, GEHC, there's a couple of cool things about this. One, this is an IPO that formed a base right here at the bottom. And on that base breakout, it had a breakout and a pullback to retest. That retest was a nice area to buy in. Now, this has been following its 10 and 21 day moving average for a long time now, and it is at its highs. So I'm not a huge advocate at buying at highs. I like to buy when it's, if you're playing off the 10 day, I like to buy off the 10 day, right? So it's, it's a little extended for me, but this healthcare stock looks like it is ship shaping up. Now, I don't know anything about it, but it does look like it's showing proof of concept. It's showing that people are, uh, are looking at this. Good morning, Ginger. Good morning, Mama. Mama's in the building. 
Yeah, baby, let's go. Good to see you. Happy you're here. Cheers to you, Mom. This is black. You know it. Black coffee. I don't know. I don't think you're using sugar in yours anymore, but that's a okay. So let's keep on keeping on, guys. So Meta just trading sideways now, just like it seems like the rest of everything else is. So let's take a look at BLPH, see if that held up today. This is a 3 million float stock, guys. If you're looking at something that you want to see hold, this 450 area would be a nice little risk to hold. But we need a couple more days to, to uh, well, we really need a, a, about a week for this thing to ship shape up. But I'm going to keep an eye on BLPH just because BLPH does look like a future runner possibility, okay? Let's take a look at CVV on the right-hand side. So Keith Staller, thank you for joining us. I think I've seen you in the stock market um, watch list or it could have been over there at the US Stock Traders. Um, either way, it's good to see you again and I'm glad that you could reach out into this chat and say hello. So hello, hello. <coughs> we'll look at CVV really quick. So the first thing I see on CVV is one, that it is very illiquid. So if I look at this, just on its range, we're looking at a 32 cent range. So this is not a very liquid stock. If you were to get into this and hit market buy, you would be down a great deal of money. So make sure you're using your join the bid and join the ask buttons on that. And if we look at this, we had a, uh, a beautiful push higher, okay? Look at this beautiful push higher. And then it pulled back, breaking through all these moving averages. Now it looks like it's starting to curl here and it looks like we had higher volume on the buy and less volume on these sell-offs. So this does look like it's curling. It does look like you might have a nice little area to risk off of this 1050 area, but we don't know for sure what's going to happen here because I have nothing really to go off of. This is the only base that I have to go off of and it's very illiquid. So remember this thing can move 10.4% at one time. So it's a very fast mover. So if this is something that a small account is looking at, make sure you use proper risk management because this thing can rip your stupid face off. It really will. And you'll it'll take the nose with you, okay? So be careful with CVV. It does look like it's ship shaping up though. I do like it. So thanks for bringing that up, Keith. And I hope I have earned your subscription and your support. So let's take a look at Oxy just because Alex is all over Oxy today. So Oxy, look at those. And he was talking about puts on Oxy. And it looks like wherever he has taken them today, it doesn't matter if he took them anytime after uh, the Fed came out, after he turned his microphone on, it looks like he is doing great on that. 49% winner right there, brothers. Yeah, baby, that's what I like to see. And that's what I like to preach. Make sure you know your risk and your reward when you are taking these things, guys, because they can be very volatile. Oxy only moves 2.7%, but with Fed Powell talking, you can only guess how volatile the markets can really get. Keith, you're absolutely welcome. Uh, you're very, very welcome. I appreciate you being here, brother. We need more people like you. So the SPY, just trading sideways, you know. Uh, let's see, uh, Twenty, the 20% 20 of you that chose sideways so far uh, this morning, you are very correct. Now, we have 45 minutes till I have to take off and I have to do my dad diligence and take care of all my youngins. But while I'm here, guys, let us see what you are looking at. If you bring it up in chat, I would love to take a look at it. If not, I'm gonna run through the indices and I'm gonna run through my trades. Speaking of trades, let's look at SMCI and see how that trade's doing. We're up about $100 on this right now and this is how you wanna see it digest information. Why do I say that? Well, we had a huge push off that 10 day moving average, right here's that 10 day. This is where I bought it previous day because it got really, really tight. And because it pushed off of that 10 day and went into resistance, we got half of our share, a little more than half of our shares out. Okay, so we're up about 50 bucks on this trade right now. Now I left the last 10 shares in there. We're up about $45 on that too. We're gonna see how this wants to digest the information. So after a huge liquidity push like that, you don't wanna see a ton of sell off. You definitely don't wanna see a ton of sell off. And look at what we're seeing here. We're seeing a lot of volume to the push side. And now that it's time to sell this thing off in its resistance, you're not seeing much much sell-off at all. Now, we still have plenty of time in this day. There still can be a lot of sell-off here, but we need to take our time, sit back, relax, because we already have made our money in this trade. What does that mean? That means I've already taken shares out of this trade. That means I've already moved my stop loss back up to break even. My stop loss is at 98.60 now. So if this thing comes all the way back down and stops me out for break even, then the only thing I'm losing is the extra $44 that's in there. I've already paid myself into this trade and that's how I like to look at it. I like to look at, I've already paid myself into this trade, so therefore I am doing A-okay 
and now I can wait for that bigger expected move, that heavenly rain scent check from way up above. That's what I'm holding out for, guys. And I don't care what it does from here to my stop loss. I don't care. That's what I'm holding out for, okay? And I've been burned on these before. That's A-OK. -okay. But with the overall expectancy being over the 200 day moving average, I am still that bear with bull horns. My bear horn, my bear horns, that's true. My bear horns are chalked up and I'm ready. I'm strapping and I'm ready to go to the north side and that's why I'm catching some of these very strong stocks in this very weak market, okay? So MAXN looks like it's coming back down now to test that high, okay? So we talked about this. This is a lagger in the market. It is a lagger opposed to uh, the leader, which is FSLR. So let's bring up FSLR on this right-hand side. And you can see we're having a little pullback, but it's trying to find some support. We're uh, Personally, I'm waiting for the 10, 21, and 30-day moving average to catch up to FSLR in order to show us a better trade. But we have this MAXN, which is also a solar tech, which is also in the same sector. And we had a big push up over 20% on the earnings and we could have taken this play, but I know it's not a leader in the sector. So I'm not going to bank on this thing doing the same thing for solar as, okay? It hasn't been around that long. So I need to see it ship shape up. So it did break its highs here. It broke out and now it's coming back to test those same highs. So I'm gonna wanna see this thing in the next couple of days, at least trade sideways. I can't just hop on board of this because it's just too big of a move up. And I have bit my tongue before because of that, but that's A-OK, -okay. that's part of it. So let's take a look at Baba. Let's take a look at Baba. This one's for you, New Vision. All right, so Baba, guys, New Vision brought up Baba last week and we talked about these gap ups, okay? These gap ups or these gap downs and we just see this all the selling off. I said the only thing that looks important for Baba is anytime it gaps up like it did right here, I told you like we're running into resistance, but we're right into an area of buy, of support. So if it's breaking that support, that support is now what? That support is now resistance, all right? So be careful in Baba, it looks like it's breaking down um, it looks like it's breaking down in a bad way if it can't hold that supply area, okay? So be careful, watch out below, but on the RSI, on the daily, Baba does look like it's very oversold right here. So we can keep an eye on that too. If you're an RSI player, um, one thing you can look at right here is in these RSI, we have, um, well, it looks, we're gonna have to wait a few minutes, but it looks like a lower high on the RSI and a lower low on the actual daily on Baba. So that, that could be actually posed as a trade where we, we have a lower low on the RSI but a higher high on the daily. That could show a bullish sign in a sense. But I don't play like that. Uh, I just look at Baba and I see it selling off and it came back up here to touch its resistance at 88 and it's selling off further. So that's my thoughts on Baba, not yours. Take them how you will. Let's take a look at WATT from my boy Keith. So Keith, W-A-T-T, -T, you can tell this one's also very illiquid and any pop that it's given, it's sold off hard. So right now, the only reason why I think this thing is getting any kind of um, news is because, or any kind of push in the market is because we had a huge sell-off. So a lot of times in those huge panic sell-offs, they'll come with some people buying in those shares because they know they're gonna snap up higher. Um, also keep in mind, Keith, we do have earnings on the 9th. So we don't wanna be in any shares on the ninth, but this is an overall well beat down stock. It's not one that I'm looking at for a day trade or a swing trade in any sense right now. Now, if this thing wanted to break up higher and find some support right around that 83 area and trade sideways, then we might be able to look at what, but for right now, it's a no-go. If you put your money in the stock, you might be stuck in these areas for years, for years almost. So be very careful with that. Now let's take a look at the SPY and I wanna look at the Amazon, I wanna look at Meta, and I wanna see if anything is ship shaping up yet for me to take a trade on. Because right now, with the way the SPY looks, guys, and I gotta be very honest, because this is how it's gonna play out, right? I'm looking at the five minute, we're gonna zoom out to the hourly, but we have a SPY that broke down its supply area and just got soaked right back up, okay? Big five minute soak. Now, if we look at the hourly, we're also seeing that same soak. It came right down here and look, it got bought right back up into this area right back up. So now if this thing wants to sit here and hold and digest all this information, that could be a very big key here. That might mean that we want to head higher. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the indices. Of course I wanna look at Meta. I wanna make some money back on Meta. And it looks like this little push, I mean, if it could just push up into this area, I like that, I, you guys, I have a bid out at 184 even. 
uh, for a short sale. So I'm still looking for that short. <clears throat> Let's take a look at Tesla. All right, Uncle Tesla. So Uncle Tesla broke out above that VWAP for a half a second into the 183.26 area, and it looks like it's trying to head lower now. But it's on an uptrend. We're going to see if that soak is going to help hold it up. But remember, guys, I'm talking 176 probably on Tesla. It's still looking pretty weak. Uh, every pop's getting a little sell-off. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what I'm expecting, expecting with the overall market is still that pop and that sell-off. Um, Google, look at that nice little push right into its peak and now it's starting to sell off. So uh, if you're still into this, if you're still into this trade, keep in mind that this is the area of resistance I was telling you about. Again, above that we have $96 and we have another pocket of resistance. Everything in this gray area right here is gonna be Google resistance. So we're gonna see how that plays out. And I know we got some of you in there trying to take a trade to the north side. So be careful in there. Let's take a look at the queues. So the queues look overall strong in this market right now, still trying to stay at its highs for the day at 297.52. So um, it looks like there's plenty of overhead resistance though, right in that 298, $300 area. So keep that in mind when looking for a long. Um, now I've, I've been keeping an eye on Boyle because I like Boyle. I like to see all this trading activity, but I'm not sure. And I've told you guys from the start, I'm not sure about Boyle. I just don't understand it. Now SMH, this is your uh, semiconductor ETF and it looks like it's doing well, but resistance is support, ladies and gentlemen. So please be careful up there in that 247 area. So do I have a read yet? Do I have a read? I don't feel like I have a read yet. It just seems like we're getting some soaking. We're getting a lot of sideways action. We're getting a lot of indecision and FUD in the market. So let's see here. Spy playing that sideways movement, bring it back to good old choppy. Key said, word is it could reverse split. Still waiting and watching. Watt, definitely not a day trade. Yeah, so that watt, if you're looking for a reverse split, that... Uh, you know, I don't, that's not going to make you any money or lose you any money uh, in any way, I, I don't imagine. Um, if you play those, they just go up and they go down simply because they're either uh, putting the shares together or pulling those shares apart to make more. Uh, but it doesn't actually change the, the, the average value that you hold, uh, if I'm saying that right. I believe the sideways is good to create a very strong support for the upwards movement. Absolutely, Alex. Uh, if it can hold at least, lol. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. You know, um, sideways action can be very boring and it might be slower for the streams, but I'll tell you this, guys, if you want to see a really good day in the markets, you will need to see that sideways action. And we can actually look back here at some of these examples. Like, look at all this sideways action. We had sideways action from that 420 all the way down here, this 404. Okay, but once it broke, Look at this big move that we had, and now we're getting that sideways action. And if we can get that sideways action in a tighter area, we'll get bigger moves, okay? If we can get it to, to make it really, really tight and trade really, really sideways, really, really tight, then once we actually get that pivot, once we push through one way or the other, then we will definitely see a bigger move. So let's look at ENTX for my boy Keith. Keith, I really hope that I have earned your subscription, sir, because I am working my butt off for you. But I am here for you guys now. ENTX, if we look, um, I don't really have to draw it, but we have this beautiful downtrend here, okay? And every time it pops up to that downtrend, it looks like it's getting sold off. And right now, at $1.30, it also looks like it's getting a pop and a sell off. And also, keep in mind though, guys, we're getting a lot of volatility uh, on the push side, but we're not getting a lot on the sell side. So if this wants to hold up, this would be a great area of support for it to prove it to us. And it looks like every time it comes down to that area of liquidity, it's bouncing off that. So we are getting a high tight pennant on ENTX. So I'm going to take ENTX and I'm going to put that on our, uh, on our, uh, our, our watch list there for you, Keith. And then we'll also look up the float on ENTX. So let's take a look. ENTX is a 21 million float. So you need to really be careful with this float. 21 million float will rip your face off and it will hurt. It'll take your nose off and your socks with it. So just on that same note, in that same breath, I like to look at the short float interest and there is no short float interest on this. It's only like 0.14. So you don't have to worry about ENTX being squeezily squoze. There's no juice box being held with ENTX, but it looks like you do have a nice area of risk right here at that $1 area-ish. 
and we're sitting at $1.30. So maybe if it comes down here and wants to play in this area, maybe even give it a few more days to get tight and let these 10 day moving average, 21 day moving averages catch up, that actually might be a decent play, Keith. So definitely gonna keep that on my watch list. And if we get a nice uh, relative volatility index comes in there, if that pushes it up on my scanners, this might be a beautiful one to take for the future. But for now, I need, think it needs some more time. So I uh, hope you like it, Keith. I hope you like it. V-R-A-X, low pencil. What up, low pencil? It's happening, dog. So V-R-A-X, it looks like it's trying to find some support at its bases. We planned this out a long time ago. These are its liquidity areas. And I said, if this thing pushes up and pulls back, it needs to show us some support. Whether it's on this 120 or whether it's on this $1, it needs to see that support. Now, we know these things want to fight to stay above a dollar. So if it does, if it does come down to this dollar, you probably are gonna see some fighting done. And it looks like that's what you're seeing here. So these aren't buy or sell recommendations, guys. I'm just looking at the chart on the hourly over here on the right hand side. And it looks like NRAX is still trying to find that $1 area so it can stay listed on the NASDAQ, okay? New Vision, thank you for bringing up AI. We haven't looked up AI in a while. And then we need to look at my trade. So it looks like AI is trying to actually use that $25 as support. So. I've been talking to you guys about this $25 area. It's psychological and it is an area of support. So if I just pull it all the way across here, this is its area of support. So we got plenty of time for AI. It's a bigger stock. I think it's a 75 or 100, 100 million float. Uh, while it's right here, we'll just bring it back up. We look this up like once a day, I feel like. Yeah, 100 million float, it's like 90 million. So that's pretty close, uh, not bad. Uh, pat myself on the back for that one. Uh, <laughs> let me take a sip of coffee. Looks like the SPY is starting to sell off now. Let's take a look at the Qs. Yeah, AI looks like it's still just playing around in that $25 area. The Qs look like it touched that liquidity area. Look at that. Just touched that liquidity area and now is starting to sell off. Where Meta, good old tasty Meta. Let's zoom in and yes. Yeah, it looks like it is starting to sell off too. So I'm gonna try and join this ask for another scary little trade here because I like these wick offs on the 15 more than the hourly. So if we go to the 15, let's see, we are getting, it's not the biggest, it's not the best uh, sell off on the 15, but we are seeing plenty of wicks overhead. So this might be a tasty little trade to the south side. So we're gonna see because we know the overall market uh, looks like it's running into those resistance areas. And that's why we always talk about these cues. That's why we always bring up all these different things, guys, is because we wanna see how the overall indices, how the overall market is ship shaping up. Because if it's not, if it's not ship shaping up uh, and it looks like it wants to keep pulling back, then we are gonna to wanna to make sure we're in our shorts, that we're positioned properly, right? And if we position ourselves properly, we can extrapolate a lot of money from this market. And that's why we're here in pre-market, guys. That's why we do exactly what we do. Because if you're here for the pre-market prep, you will know right off the get, guys. You will know right off the get, we go over all of that, right? We go over every single thing. We're gonna take 25 shares out right there, pay ourselves into that, into that liquidity push down. We're about up $18 on this trade. Uh, we're gonna see how this plays out um, because you know if this starts ship shaping up in this area, you know I'm not gonna be playing around with it, okay? Now I got plenty of wicks over the top, but we got wicks on the bottom, so we know that there is a fight in this area. So uh, every time I get in, you know, I get a little nervous here because you know it's big money, it's big money, guys. So I'm gonna take out another 25 shares here while we're still up, and we're gonna hold on to this last nine dollars to see what it wants to give us. So I'm gonna take out the last bit if it doesn't break soon, because I do not wanna hold on to anything with any losses. We're gonna keep on keeping on making that money, baby. Fighting back. Uh, we are now up on the day. We are up probably 10 to $15 on the day, or maybe much more. I haven't really uh, looked into it, but if we're only down $66 on this, we're up over $100 on SMCI. We're doing great for today. So I absolutely love it. I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, and I'm blessed to be here, guys. I'm blessed for the simple fact that I have the ability to be here and to do this. So let's take a look at AI. Yeah, AI is in its support, guys. It is in its support. It needs to hold this area of $25, okay? 
uh, 25 to 2450 this area looks like it needs to hold okay if it doesn't hold this area and it breaks down lower then our next area is this 22 23 do dollar area okay so if you guys are looking at AI to take a trade uh, you know be very careful you guys know the risks that are involved with this uh, AI is a very speculative stock it's definitely one that there's a lot of eyes on and uh, you know just be careful guys be careful know your risk and make sure you adhere to that risk we don't want any bag holders in this chat room Okay, if you are, it's A-OK -okay, as long as you're learning from it because honestly, you're a loser unless you're learning from your trades. Okay, guys, so let's keep on keeping on. Let's keep on making that money and let's keep extrapolating that cash from the market. So I'm not getting that quick flush that I wanted so bad. Now, there we go. We're getting a couple bucks out of it. We're still in 50 shares on this meta short sale trade. Is it going to give me what I want? We will see because I'm thinking that this thing could easily come down to... Uh, well, we'll see. All right, now we're finally breaking down. What about that VWAP? Should I just get out at VWAP or should we hold on for the bigger expected move? Well, I'll tell you, I've been getting burned quite a bit, quite a bit, but we're gonna see, because I think the overall market does want to sell off. So let's take a look at some things and some things we will look at. And it looks like the SPY does have a big wick off on that top. Is it going to fill all of that wick on the base? Because I'm telling you, that big wick off on the bottom from Jarrell Powell turning on the microphone got soaked right back up. So will it do it again? It's always a great question. So this VWAP area, just because we want to fight back, I think I'm just going to go ahead and take another 25 shares here. All right. So we're going to buy another 25 shares back on this. There we go. If you hate short sellers, no worries, because I am buying. I'm just borrowing and then buying. Borrow, buy, borrow, buy, borrow, buy. That's how you make some money, baby. So now I'm gonna go ahead and set this last piece, this last 25 shares. We're gonna let this thing play out, see what it wants to give me. We are at 83.10 for the break even. So 83.10 is right, 83.10 is right here. So this is my break even area. And if the market wants to stop me out for 25 shares right there, then that is A-OK. -okay. If it wants to head on lower from that VWAP, that's A-OK -okay too. So we've extrapolated another 25, 30 bucks out of the market there. So that's looking absolutely scrumptious. So let's see, let's see what's going on. Uh, day trade talk still there. Okay, Keith, I got you on the ENTX. Hope you enjoyed it. VRAX looking good for a curler. Well, let's take a look at VRAX. And then guys, I need to go over my trades to see if I'm still making money. Yeah, so we did talk about VRAX. We talked about this being the support area. Uh, I personally said I need to see a few more days because I want to see it test a few more times in this dollar area. But yeah, we do have a little bit of a curl here. I'm looking on the hourly. You guys are probably seeing more of a curl on the five minute or a one minute. And yeah, you're starting to see that V-shaped bottom in that curl. But Guys, don't get too excited. This thing on the five minute is barcoding. This isn't very liquid. You can get stuck in this thing, okay? We're seeing it's only a penny, but it's barcoding. This looks like, you know, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't look like anything that I would ever want to trade, okay? What we want to see from this is this thing to trade sideways and show us that support. Don't just jump into something because it looks like it's curling, guys. Just be very, very careful. But thank you for bringing that up, little Pencil, because that does look like a good future trade. I think that's something else that uh, Keith brought up as well. So let's see the side hustle. Can you take a look at TRKA? Darn toot, and I can take a look at TRKA. Uh, let's take a look, and then we're gonna go over my trade. So guys, it's heading right up into that 50 cent area. So keep in mind that 50 cent area is going to be a very, very volatile area. Now this very well could break through and head all the way to the north side and keep heading higher and higher and higher. Okay, uh, you gotta give both sides of the story. But keep in mind, if you're longing this thing, this 50 cent area is going to be a very, very uh, interesting area. We'll just say say the least, okay? Very interesting area in that area. So if you're in for the long, make sure you're paying yourself, guys. These aren't buy or sell recommendations either. I'm just looking at the chart and I'm saying, this is what I see. And I see a very heavy bag holding supply at 50 cent area. So be careful. If you are the bag holder, you need to be careful. All right, let's take a look at my trades, guys. So. We're gonna start with SPY, because I always like to take a look at SPY. Now SPY is breaking down, it's right down into the rest of these wicks where we imagine there's some supply, but I'm not seeing any, so watch out below. We got XM. Now, as the overall market pulls back, why is XM wanting to take off? That looks very interesting. So we're in XM, we're up about eight bucks. We've already gained about 10 bucks out of this silly trade, but we're gonna hold on to see 
bluer skies because I do like XM for the longer trade, but it only moves 3.3%. So we're just going to hold on to it and watch how these things play out. Now we got CRUS just traded sideways. We're taking that to defend the 10 and 21 day moving average. ALGM, kind of a boring trade. We're just trying to play that cup and handle. It's still a little extended from the 10 and 20 day moving average. We're up about six bucks for the day. JSPR, yeah, well, I kind of went out of this trade. So if this thing wants to stop me out anytime soon, I'm okay with it. WW never got that pop this morning, so I'm not trading it. And SERA, just doing sideways things. BFRG is still up there. We're up about a creamer on that trade. It's looking pretty good. We got in at 420, but we're going to see where this thing wants to ship shape up. Of course, I'm going to want to see more higher lows to help extract some money. RBLX looks like it is getting that bounce off of this base here. Um, we're looking at this on the five minute, but as you guys know, I'm using this top as my get out. Okay, I'm 50 shares short. Okay, I'm gonna redo that stop because I thought it said 250s. So let me just go ahead. Um, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring my stop down here. Now I think it's safe enough to. Um, actually, I need to make it a buy because I'm shorting. Oh, we've made that mistake before, but that's why we learn from it. And that's why we can know how to do it right the first time. So we're going to do 50 shares. Uh, we're going to buy those shares back if it comes all the way back up here into this area. Uh, I forgot I am in NVDA. So I want to look at NVDA as well. So we took that uh, short right up here at the top on NVDA because of the downward trend line that I pointed out to you guys earlier, and it looks like we made some cash. Now it's sitting on that VWAP area. We're going to see if VWAP wants to hold out. Now I do need to go back to Meta though because we are in still another 25 shares short in Meta. I said I wanted to see how this played out. It looks like we're getting a little bounce off of that area. We might end up stopping out. Um, for break even on the last piece of this trade, but that's okay because we've already taken a lot of money out of this trade. So I always like to leave that little piece on, as you guys know, because um, simply put, I always want the bigger expected move. It's a, it, it, it's kind of a curse in a sense because I, I could just take all my money, right? Just take all my money out and be happy with all the money that I've earned from it. But I always think, man, if this thing continues, if this thing continues lower. I can make so much more money. So I always leave a little bit on there to see if I can't really make the big bucks. And then I stop out for break even if not. So same thing like NVDA yesterday, I made $80 on this NVDA short. I took this short up here in this area and I played this breakdown and I got, I made about 80 bucks here. And if I would have just left a little piece on guys, I could have woke up to an, or not woke up, but I could have came home to an even bigger profit. So those, those are just different ways, how you learn, how you manage. So absolutely. David's trying to rip that cash from Meta. You ain't kidding, brother. It tried to rip it for me. First thing this morning, guys, you were here. Uh, first thing this morning, that thing, uh, see, sold Meta. Okay, so Meta, Meta's pushing back up and it looks like NVDA is giving us a nice bounce off of this, uh, off this VWAP area. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my small wins on this guys because uh you know the the bleh, just because uh you know i'm gonna lock in my profits sure it's a cup of coffee that's a-okay because you guys know i love coffee just as much as the next guy and you know what's great about this job guys is i look at the clock and i go dang I only got 20 minutes left here with you guys. 20 minutes left. If I could, I would do this all day with you guys, but my throat would be gone and I probably would lose all sense of humanity. Uh, I would be just a chart uh, talking head in this room. So I can't do that. Uh, and, and I'm saying that to myself. Uh, don't do that, Michael. Uh, don't do that, Dave. You want to chill out. You want to you wanna have yourself a good old time and you don't want to be uh, a sweaty mess, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at RBLX because it looks like if everything else is going to hold out, yes, RBLX is going to want to hold out too. But we're making new higher lows on that and we also aren't doing anything but trading sideways on the SPY. So I'm going to stay true to this. I've already pulled my uh, ticker down. So let me go through all my trades here because I want to know where I'm at. So XM, we're doing okay. Let's see, we can skip those three because those are just silly. Uh, JSPR, still trading sideways. SERA, come on, give me that push, SERA. I mean, it's squatting down on those moving averages. Look at this. It's just squatting down on that 10-day, guys, just like 
Just like you see on SMCI, it's squatting down just like that is, okay? BFRG still up a cup of coffee and RBLX. I'm still in short, guys. We're down about $1.75 on this. We just want to make sure that this thing is a good short for the long term down. But it, oh, so far, it's been holding that push at its highs and it's trading sideways. And for RBLX to do that um, is very strong. You know, it's very strong for this stock that I'm overly biased in the downside. Uh, you know, all these sell-offs, you know, all this crap, it keeps pushing back up here. It keeps trading at these highs and it's still looking relatively well. So I could be wrong on this short, like I've been wrong on other things, but that's A-OK. -okay. We're gonna be wrong, but we're gonna lose less than we're making. And that's the most important part. As long as you're losing less than what you're bringing in. So guys, I'm Dave. I'm here every single day, Monday through Friday, 8 until 12. This is Lo-Fi Trading, baby. We do live commentary, live analysis, and of course, we take live trading right here in front of you every single day, Monday through Friday. So if you like it, if you love it, if you want some more of it, hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that subscribe button because I want you to be a part of all these like-minded traders. Now, TRKA, everybody's watching it. It's coming up to that 50 cent area. Will I be right? Will we start to see sell-off in that 50 cent area? Only time will tell, but I I can see that there is volatility ahead. Now, I hope for any of you bag holders, this thing blows right on through, heads right up to the north side, and just extrapolates so much money from the market. But if you are bag holding, please keep in mind that you will be a bag holder forever if it doesn't get past the perfect point. So make sure you have your risk in mind. Make sure you know when to extrapolate that money while you are in there. So TRKA trading at 45 cents, looking good right here for the shorts in the sense. But if you're long, hey, there's always hope. But remember, I'm not going to try and feed you any hopium. I'm going to be the bear with bull horns, expecting it to swipe down, but hoping that it'll head higher. That's why they're chalked. That's why those horns are chalked, ladies and gentlemen. Bear with bull horns, baby, because we want to see our 401ks go higher. We want to see our Roth IRAs. We want to see our retirements going higher. But, but if they don't, first and foremost, I want to make money in this market. And if you want to make money too, you need to never have a bias to either side too much because that can really hurt. Emotions will make you hold on to that bag and emotions will make you stupid. You'll be a loser unless you learn from your losers okay guys so as uh, let's go ahead and take a look at tesla and then we'll look at uh amd sfr we'll go through all that okay guys so tesla tesla looks like it's trying to hold those lows it's really gonna have to but it's looking really weak in this area because guys it's support it doesn't have any support until it gets down to that 175 area so it's not looking too good for uncle tesla in these areas guys all right so let's take a look at amd so AMD, just again for Tesla, if it can hold these areas, that's gonna look like, uh, that's gonna look a lot better for it. But if it's not holding those areas, goodness gracious, you know what I mean? Now AMD, it looks overall strong compared to the rest of the market, still moving higher above a 200 day moving average and curling up, following a 30 day moving average as well. So AMD is looking overall really well. And if you're looking to get long in AMD, you might wanna wait for a, uh, a, a, a cheeky little pullback um, but yeah, AMD is looking overall strong. Now, if you want to know what the leader is, the leader is NVDA, okay? And NVDA is the leader because it has been for a long time now, right? It's all the way, way up, way above its 200 day moving average. Um, just, just trading absolutely beautiful. So if you're looking at a leader and you're looking at a lagger, the leader would be NVIDIA and your lagger would be AMD. So if you like AMD, then you're going to love NVIDIA, okay? So... Just make sure you're using your risk and you know where your reward is. Guys, I only have 15 minutes left, so make sure you hit that like. Make sure you hit that subscribe. Let's see. Last one for me, SFR. Keep, make sure that you are kept up on the chat by making sure you guys hit that live button. Here, I'll just show you really quick so you know how to do it. Right here, look on my screen, this screen right here. If you scroll down, you will see that you aren't live if this, isn't gra if this is grayed out, but you can click live or you can take this scrolly thing and pull all the way to the right. That'll ensure that you are live with us right now. And then on top of all that, guys, uh, make sure you hit uh, the, the like button. Uh, honestly, you guys don't even have to hit the like button if you don't want to because we hit the 25 marker. We hit it, guys. Yes, breaking new records every single day. We hit that 25 like. If you want to, go for it. If you don't, that's A-OK -okay too, guys, because we hit 
our we did it we did it team we we made it we made that 25 so thank you very much and while you're down there if you guys want to hit that subscribe we won't ask of you of anything guys not one thing will be asked of you except for your love and support to be here for pre-market prep and hit that like and subscribe okay sfr so Keep in mind, guys, FSR right now is at its very highs, okay? And when we're at these highs, they're never a good time to buy. When I look at SFR, the first thing I think of is risk. If I looked at this, where am I gonna risk? Well, the only thing to really risk off of is this push up right here. This big push up, that would be a, that would be a psychological area because it came down and retested it, okay? So this area right here would be my risk. Now, we are way too far from my risk to wanna get in. Because if I get in at these highs, most likely it's gonna come all the way back down here and test this risk. So if you like the stock, if this is something that you're looking at, right now is not the time to be buying in. I would say that SFR, decent stock, yes. We have plenty of vol volume and it looks like it's trying to hold, but we need some more time for this thing to prove to us that it wants to continue higher. So Keith, awesome stock, that last one, SFR, I like it. It's definitely one that you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on. And if we start ship shaping up, trading sideways, let me know, brother, because that might be a future trade. So let's see, I'm back, had a doctor appointment. MTC question mark, sure, let's take a look. So MTC over here, it looks like it's just above its 200 day moving average, pumping up on some volume. So this thing's gonna need a little bit longer here, be Stewie, for the 10 day, 20 and 30 day moving averages to catch up. But it does look decent. Now overall in the past, Anytime it's broken out above that 200 day moving average, it's sold off super, super hard. So very, very skeptical stock. I would be very, very careful and make sure you're doing your due diligence on this one. If you look to take a trade, make sure you have a hard stop in line because it looks like that thing will flush out on you extremely quick. So hate when I miss part of the show. Well, Beast Dewey, I hate when you miss it too, but listen, Health is more important than anything. Actually, my boy came over yesterday. My boy, Terry Roberto, came over yesterday and he gave me a speech. And that speech went like this. You need to take care of yourself first so that way you can take care of everybody else around you. And as a dad, that's so hard to do. You got crying kids, you got crying family members, you got a wife to deal with. Sometimes life can be tough, right? And on top of that, I got my own crap. But for four hours, guys, I'm gonna come here every single day, bleed that positivity, right? That's what we gotta do, we gotta bleed that positivity. So, when you miss part of the show, that's A-OK, -okay, as long as you're doing it to better yourself. Sometimes, uh, in the first week, I had to miss the, the last hour of the show to go better myself, right? So that's A-OK, -okay, guys. Sometimes we gotta do what we gotta do to keep on keeping on. So amen back to you, B. Stewie. Thank you for that. So, uh, let's see, we'll skip that since he says, well, never mind. Uh, market moving up, greener, spy at 399.52, New Vision says. So, that thing's zoomed. Meta is breaking out nicely, yes! As we were talking about with Meta looking very strong with the overall market uh, holding out, it looks like, and I totally forgot I was in this trade, so that's not good. Looks like I'm right back down to where I started when we were in this. So that's what happens when I get distracted. Now, what am I looking for in this area? I said that 184 area, that is where I wanna get in short. So we are in that shorted area. So thank you so much for bringing this back up to my attention because we talked about how this looking like it's looking strong, but I did forget. Oh, you know what it was? I had 25 shares that I was short and then I I, I tried to sell those short and I accidentally got more short. So instead of having an awesome trade on that, guys, uh, instead it turned into a wild loss because I pressed the wrong button. That simple, guys. You need to know whether you're short or you're long. And I knew I was short, but I still bought more short. So it's looking pretty nasty, but here's the thing. Uh, I'm not gonna sweat it. This is one of those things where we're in that area that I wanted to get in short and it's testing that area. So I'm gonna give this a little bit more time uh, because I think that this might be able to break down from here. Now I could be wildly wrong and I could lose a little bit more money. This is a nice little chunk to be losing, but that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, we're gonna be closer to break even now today with the wins and the losses adding up, but that's all right. This is part of learning, right guys? Maybe I should have had that stop set and that stop was set, but that stop was not a buy order, it was another sell order. So right when it got up to the top, to lay, to, so I could break even on the rest of that trade, it got me in more short as it pushed up higher. So that was very, very bad. But as you guys know, this 184 is the area I am looking to short anyway. So I'm in it to win it. I'm just way out of my comfort zone with this push higher. So we're gonna hold out. We're gonna see what the market wants to bring us. But I promise this, if this breaks this 184.50 area, I will be Audi like a 5,000. And we looked that up on the show that one time, right? So we're gonna go ahead and put our stop loss up here. 
Uh, I'm just going to keep an eye on it. Actually, I'll put a uh, an alert right here. Actually, I won't even put an alert. We're actually going to do the buy. We're going to do the buy stop just as I should, just above this uh, 184.40 area. I like the 180.50 area better, but that's just going to be too much. But uh, hey, I did this to myself. So we're going to put our stop loss right here, and we are going to hope and pray. And I mean it when I say that. We're going to hope, and I say hope respectfully, because this was a mess up on a trade. Now we are down a little bit too much on this, and that's A-OK, -okay, guys, because, well, sometimes that's trading. So we are going to look elsewhere to see if we can extrapolate cash from the market from somewhere else. Let's see how our other trades are doing. Our RBLX looks like it's also shooting up higher. We talked, as I was shorting this, guys, I talked about how these trades were looking strong with the overall market pulling back and these look like they were still holding up. So what am I doing trying to short a strong market? Great question and I'm glad you asked. Well, we did a great job taking those highs respectfully and shorting them down. But when we tried to put our stop loss in, bada bing, bada boom, next thing you know, this thing pushed higher and grabbed me in more short. That's A-OK. -okay. We're gonna learn from that trade because you're a loser unless you are learning. Now, RBLX looks like it wants to push up through, but will the overall market hold up or are we gonna see finally this sell-off that I have been expecting. Well, the overall market in the queues is back up in to that supply zone. And let's take a look at the SPY. SPY is also still trading in that supply area. It finally has a push and made a new double top here. This new double top right here on the SPY. Will it break up higher? Will it keep on keeping on? Only time will tell. But we only have about eight minutes left in this. That's A-OK. -okay. Papa Powell, boring people, moving on with their lives. Yeah, that might be true. They're just like, ah, yeah, well, OK, old man. Uh, you're done talking now. Let's keep on heading higher in the market. But only time will tell, guys. We don't really know what's going to happen. We know we got a lot of wicks off on the bottom. And we know we had some wicks off on the top. We knew that there was a battle going on in this area. And it looks like the north side, for now, is prevailing. Will it continue higher? Only time will tell. So let's take a look at Meta, because it hasn't stop me out yet it's just lingering like a stinky fart right there at that 184 area you know that 184 is solid guys it is a solid area for short but i promise you this if this thing wants to push up and break off through there and head higher this might be a great trade to the north side. So I hope I'm giving you guys in peace and all these informations together for you so you could extrapolate some money from the market today. So let's see, 399 is my target for the next trim. Awesome job, Alex. New Vision Spy, 399.69. Yeah, let's go spy. 399.45 right now as the spy sits. So we got six minutes left, guys. So if you're in here and you're new to this channel, hit that like, hit that subscribe because we're growing an amazing community. I go live every single day, Monday through Friday, eight until 12. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose, but either way, we stay positive. We stay positive, we look up what you want to see, we see what you want to look up, and if we weren't, then somebody has to do it, right? All right, so guys, we are going to see what happens with this meta trade. I might have to babysit this after stream, but that's A-OK. -okay. Let's run through what else I got going on. So NVDA, we extrapolated that $1.05. Not much down here, but we knew it was doing that nice little bounce off VWAP. Now, what did I say? If the overall market's hot and we start to get a nice cheeky little trade here on NVIDIA, this breakout might be something else. So if the overall market wants to break out and NVIDIA wants to show strength right here, this might be a nice little pusher to the high side guys so keep in mind too uh you know this breakout you want to see it on volume we are starting to see some volume come back in here but remember it's lunchtime so we might get a nice little lull in the market so the overall market is at those highs nvda back up there at those highs you know maybe i just take a nice little uh short here um and then get out if it does break that area because this is more of the short the short area as to where if uh, that's great risk reward here, and uh, if we can come back down to that VWAP, that'd be great. Uh, if not, you know, I'll take a small loss. I think that is great risk reward in this area. So we'll see if NVDA wants to print us out a little bit of cash money, or if the market is so strong, we would have to reverse this trade and bring it back to the north side. So we will see what happens right here for NVDA, NVIDIA. NVIDIA actually is the best way to say it. So let me stay focused because we only got a few more minutes in this uh, market today. We only got a few for me, for this live show, guys. So uh, if you want to see me tomorrow, just hit that subscribe button because you know I'm going to be here making trades, making money, baby, because that's what we like to do. So let's see what's going to happen. What's going to happen? 
Let's take a look at the indices. So SPY looks like it's still pushing up towards those highs as well as Nvidia looking absolutely great here. We might have to reverse this. This might break out. Oh, look at the Qs looking absolutely beautiful, but they're just all so up here at these highs that I just feel like this is why I'm taking this short in Nvidia is because of that simple high there. So great risk reward here. We're gonna see if we can extrapolate a little bit more money from Nvidia. Uh, it's not looking the best for me right here, guys. Not looking the best at all, but we got good risk reward. We're risking about 50 to make about 500 in this situation, which is pretty dang good. But all I need to do is be able to hold out onto those risk rewards because you get a little squeamish when you get down on some money. So ladies and gentlemen, make sure you know your risk, make sure you know your reward, and make sure you are here for the pre-market prep. Because when you know your levels, things are a heck of a lot better for you guys if you know those levels. Know those levels, know your risk, earn that risk, earn that RARI, so we can keep showing up every single day to this market to keep on trying to make that money, baby. So let's go ahead and bring up my trades on the top left-hand side just before we go. We have SPY trading at 399.40, looking absolutely great back up there at those highs, but will it hold off or will it trade lower? So let's take a look at CLMT, just trading sideways. We're up a little bit on CRUS. We might actually see that thing pay us out. ALGM looks like it is just also trading sideways. We're up about eight bucks on that trade today. We have JSPR still trading lower. Uh, it doesn't look like it doesn't want to do much here. So that might end up stopping us out tomorrow, but we shall see guys. We shall see. So let's take a look at WW. Now WW only did nothing but sell off. I tried to get 10 shares short in the pre-market, but didn't do Jack Diddley squad for me. So that being said, um, we're just going to have to sit here, sit back and wait for WW. So I'm not in that one. Sierra just trading sideways and BRFG, we're up about a cup of coffee in. So that's great for us. And RBLX never stopped us out on this short. Uh, we're still in it. So we're gonna see what will happen here. So we're gonna keep an eye on things. I feel like I just, that's right. We got two minutes guys. We got two minutes. You got something you want me to look at? Let me know. Just got home, what's the sentiment? 12 years old and fat, it looks like we are at highs in a lot of different areas, so not really sure what's gonna happen in this area, but if we run through, it looks like we're getting some wick offs on the top. We're starting to get uh, a nice little push, but into resistance with Microsoft. Amazon had a nice push up to the tops into its resistance. It looks like it's getting a little pullback, and Meta looks like it had a beautiful push up here and then it is now pulling back right at that 184 area. Now I'm in at 183 because I did not mean to take this breakout, but I told you guys I'm not gonna stop out here because that is the original short idea. It was 184 all the way from this morning that 184 was the short idea. So I will be holding on to that to see if we can't fight back on this trade. So you know I like to fight back, that's where I make a lot of my money. But if it tests this 183 and wants to hold out, like I said, Meta looking overall strong in the market while the market pulled back. So we might not be in the short for too much longer. So Nvidia still trading at those highs. Guys, we only got one minute left, so let me just give you my spiel while you're still here. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. We take big trades, we take small trades. Sometimes we make some money, sometimes we lose some money. But either way, we are traders in this market. So if you wanna learn how to extrapolate some cash or or just like training commentary or analysis, you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys, because I'm here every single day putting this stuff on the line for you. Every single day. It's tough. It's hard being a trader sometimes when you're put on the spot like this. But guys, it is what it is, and I'm here for you, so be here for me. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, guys. Thank you so much for being here, and we